Alright guys, hello everyone today and we are doing something completely different this time, okay? This is the so-called Compass Bootcamp for all players who are new and old and we'll be running through every single topic that we came up with in the past uh, past day or so to, to, to more or less uh, hopefully cover all the things you can learn in Compass within one video. And with me, uh, I have Leela over here, who is part of Team Harpoon. And uh, he, he is like me, well, we've started since the early days of Compass. Uh, I mean, I, I started from the, the very beginning. Leela, uh, you maybe want to introduce yourself and let everyone know when you started Compass. Hello, I started Compass during the first meeting lab, I remember. And then I've been playing pretty much every day since. And that's not even a lie, too. I think I'm addicted for all the way all until present. So wait, yeah. wait, wait. Even on days that we don't hear from you, you have been playing the games. Yes, yes, Good. yes. Okay, that works. That's, I don't. I'll just say it's I part don't. Of, it's part of my good morning routine, you know. I, I wake up, I, I put the alarm on, and I get into Oh, oh lord okay okay that, that's fine you play way more than i do already okay uh oh. the, yeah okay uh we do have a lot of topics to cover today so let's go straight into it this is the very first half which is we are going to focus on deck building and this is going to be important for most new players because when you come into compass you are going to be get, uh, rolling and getting all the cards uh from all mainly you are limited to F rank, but the uh, the mm. point is, is uh, you want to talk about something about re-rolling, we said? Uh, yeah, so it's been a while since we, well, we started the game or made fresh accounts, but you usually start off with an SR, maybe a UR if you're lucky, and especially since, not to be mistaken, Compass is a gacha game, you know, you, you can spend your bit money and roll in order to get new and then new characters so a lot and a lot of people when starting off these kinds of games they always say oh shit what do i re-roll into or like what's one of the strongest things that you can get that so i can start off strong uh since you're limited your cards are limited to f rank so the cards you see on the screen right now not in the deck yes so it doesn't really matter because all the cards in the game have a certain purpose to fulfill all the ur and sr are just better versions of it so so even if you want to re-roll for the ur cards that's fine it's not required but if you really do want to spend that time going through the th through the tutorial and stuff running and doing until you get something uh, scroll up please to the f rank cards you should definitely go for no guard the eight second 80 percent which reduces all damage for 80% for 8 seconds, or Bujutsu, which is a movement speed buff. Those two cards are really helpful because movement speed, especially when you're getting started, right? When you start learning the game, having a little bit of movement speed can allow you to dodge stuff easier. And no guard is just is a really good guard. It adds a lot of HP, so does Bujutsu. So even with characters with like negative HP multiplier, you're gonna be living, more, be avoiding more. So yeah, those are definitely the two cards you should aim for if you're rerolling. Otherwise, if you get a UR like defense sub Dolcaster, Dolcaster or Son, those are fine too. Like just keep them; they're really good. But yeah, that's pretty much all on rerolling. Just have fun. If just have fun, yeah. Yeah, they just 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 start the game and figure something out because uh, most of the time you will be re-rolling for characters, anyways. So mm -hmm. uh, well, and let's just start the main event, which is basically we're gonna start talking about attacker, sprinters, gunner, and tanks. So uh, right, the top four. The top four row is the ones everybody started with. Because when when you start uh when we started the game there were only like ten 
original characters. So mm-hmm. uh, sprinters, let's start with sprinters. Okay. So for mm-hmm. sprinters, uh, what is our role exactly when playing a sprinter for most parts? Well, for sprinter, you obviously want to be to your advantage. They're the only ones that can that have increased movement speed as their hero action. So you know, most of the time, you want to get keys. You should race in so you can get keys first before the enemy does. Yes. So mm-hmm. so when uh, the dash attack is always two times the uh, wait. Yeah, because we are in landscape mode, so you're gonna see this weirdly. But uh, we are going to be looking at the cast time of characters. Okay, so uh, for sprinters, right? The thing about dash attacks is they it is always a two times multiplier for all sprinters flat out. So every time you land a dash attack, you are going to deal two times of your attack, and that on paper actually isn't much because you can just hit the guy twice. It's going to be the same effect. Mm. Unfortunately, sprinters are not. The guys who should be killing people in this game. Yeah, the, the, the main goal of sprinters is to protect the cap, uh, like mm-hmm. harass the opponent with, while doing damage. You're not going to kill them. Mm-hmm. You're going to be uh, irritating them so that they have to spend resources just to make sure they don't lose too much from you, too much HP from you. And secondly, you need to make sure you don't die. So for sprinters, for me, right, it's basically you need, uh, you are disruptors, you you are the support, you are always a support, even when you are playing an offensive uh, uh, sprinter like Chun-Li, you are still a support. The reason uh, Chun-Li can kill is because of her ability, where she can do 1.2 times on, of say, Tokai and other Rengekis, but uh, multi. yeah, multi-hits, so when... Every other sprinter, even a cock at 1.45, don't be the guy to just charge in and then try to fight an attacker head on on your own. You should be the guy who is harassing them, uh, har- harassing the back line whenever you get a chance to, and mm. making sure your team doesn't lose the caps that they have captured. Or at the and the worst case scenario, you should be the one uh, luring and a DPS from the opponent team to the to the opposite of the map, so that they can't get mm. themselves into a three v three situation. So that's you also cool. notice that uh, sprinter sprinters have the icon next to them, the foot icon, and then attackers have the fist icon. They're completely different. Yeah. <laughs> Even if one is attack oriented, no, they're they're still a sprinter. They're mainly a support role. Yes. So even on Coco Rico, which has one has a high attack and defense multiplier. Now let's talk about Zach. Zach Zag is the best. Oh, oh no. Zach is the best. He's a sprinter. Zach is the yes. sprinter that My can't... favorite character. <laughs> So, so so what they tried to do with this, they said, we want a, a heavily offense-oriented sprinter, you know. I don't know if they forgot Chun-Li exists, but Zack has definitely seen better days. He's, in my opinion, the worst character in the game because everyone who, ha- who has that niche of like, oh, I hit hard, but I can also run, is just infinitely better than him. Just because... <laughs> They designed him as an offensive sprinter, as an offense, right? But his role is, like, best when extremely defensive. And even then, when you try to be defensive with him, he has low HP. So it's so you're getting, like, three-tapped or two-tapped in certain occasions. Yes, you see, the best oh. part, he, he has <laughs> lesser HP than Kirara. Kirara. And Kirara <laughs> is infinitely more useful. <laughs> Kira, Kirara is oh. already just and as when you use him as a support is even worse <laughs> because other people are like aren't you aren't you supposed to be attacking no <laughs> no I'm going to die no but yes so so if you are, if you start the game and you want to play as a sprinter or you want to 
practice as a sprinter, remember your role. You are not, you are the disruptor. You have to try your best to contribute by making, by irritating the hell out of your opponents. Yeah, yeah this is that's the annoying. Yeah, that Tesla is one of the most annoying ones already. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you that... be to your advantage, dash out if you can. Just be defensive, but also you can go in and take pot shots at people with your dash attack if you have if you're safe enough to do so. Okay, so that's it for sprinters. We are the we are going to character specific cars over the year, over this year, and then we can talk more about in-depth strategies. So next next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about attackers. Okay, Atta- oh, okay. attackers roles is actually pretty simple. You attack. Yeah, you... You, you kill people. <laughs> you, you, you are supposed to protect your gunners, and you mm. may or may not be the main source of DPS as well. So, um... Mm. To, to put it simply, the gunners are, should always be behind. The sprinters and attackers are the ones in front. So, uh, vanguard and rear guard. The DPS mm. always comes out from the gunners or the sprinters. And mm. in order to do your job properly as an attacker, the first thing you need to know is you need to survive. You can't do damage mm. when you're dead. A uh, lot of attackers... <laughs> They have a negative HP multiplier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, let's, so let's, let's go that's, to the worst. That's kind of the trade-off. So that's the trade-off for having big damage. And the worst. Yeah, I think I think I think I'm pretty sure Saber is the worst. Is there is there somebody else that that is Kai? Yeah. Kai Kai got buff recently. That's why. No, Poro has better HP than Salter. Oh, over oh, uh, HP. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, but Marcos has point eight, no? Ah, yes, Marcos has point eight, but Marcos gains stats the moment he yeah, goes into. Like... Is it? Not no, HP, no. Attack no. defense. Okay, I. Oh, okay, okay, that's good to know. Oh yeah, because after after his hit first HS, his defense goes into positive multiplier. Okay, that mm-hmm. makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so so the point about an attacker is you have to be the front line that stops your opponent for me. Uh. It, 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 it has to be the person to that stops your opponent from running towards your gunner. If someone is charging at your gunner, you should be the one to stop it. This is a team game. So so for attackers, right, you have two main roles. One is you have to you are the first person to go in and start to create an opening or to kill someone that results in an opening. Or two, mm-hmm. you are the person that prevent a DPS loss from your team by protecting the gunner who usually does the most DPS. Uh, of course, if your gunner is a Ririka, that's a different story because if the gunner is a Ririka, that means the DPS is you. <laughs> it's a Marcos Ririka thing and we, we know that straight up. If, if, even for Noho, she is there to protect. Uh, she, she, You can see that uh, she's supposedly squishy because she only has 0.8, which is also one of the lower HP attackers out there. But... The way she punishes is because her Rengeki cast, uh, her multi-hit cast is so fast and so good. Whenever somebody stops to use a card targeted at someone else, Noho will just instantly punish them with that 1.5 multiplier. And usually mm. it's a Urara. You're, you're probably dead unless you are a tank. Yeah. So so mm. that's what attackers for me do. You protect, you defend. Though uh, mm. I'm pretty sure there are other ways to play attacker like like this guy this guy is a zoning this guy is a zoning attacker it doesn't even make sense sometimes mm-hmm. he just he basically spams range cards mm. and make sure nobody goes near <laughs> his team by spamming range so, cards yeah he so, something interesting to think about too is that you can play an attacker like a guard, I guess you can say, because tank is a different game and it means something different. Mm. But you, it's more of a guard, 
right? So yeah. you, since you guard the gunner, you guard the portal by killing other people. Yeah, Mar- Maria, Maria is one of the best. She doesn't move forward. She, <laughs> she, no, like, like for real. Uh, yeah. She, she, yeah. she cannot move forward on her own. She always mm. have to go with the gunner, or she always have to be with the sprinter. If a Maria mm. is forced into a one v one situation with another attacker, there's a very high chance she's going to lose out. Especially to uh people like, let's say, oops, uh, especially to people like let's say, uh, Darumin, and mm. even even thirteen Maria against thirteen right against a gunner, she's going to just. Stand there and take damage. It's really not worth her time. Oh, uh, remember, try not to take unnecessary damage as an attacker. Be the one who punishes people where as and when possible. Bait cards out, and then also protect your gunners where necessary. If you don't, your gunners are exposed to a sprinter. Chances are you are going to lose the game. Okay, that's it for attackers. Mm. Let's go to the tank part, which this okay. man here, just Justice, is one of the best tanks. Tank, no, no, not the best tank, but the best example of a tank. In yeah. a traditional, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a traditional tank. He is. So, yeah. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, so for tanks, right? The role of tanks is really there just to protect, protect the portal key, no matter what. Mm-hmm. You take once your team has an advantage, you take the key and then you protect it with your life. You try to survive for mm-hmm. so long, you make your opponent spend tons of resources on you, mm-hmm. like in an MMORPG. You are a tank. Like you sit the... there and and you wait. And, and you defend. You, you absorb damage. You make sure you mm-hmm. do something that allows you to absorb damage. Be mm-hmm. a threat to your opponent while mm-hmm. not killing them. <laughs> These days, justice mm-hmm. can kill them, but but he has you. You have to be the one to support your team in a really different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so what? So uh, while, uh, while sprinter go out, right? They can go out because of their mobility, because of their dash. They can go out and actually like harass people at like whatever point on the map that they want. Tanks are usually really slow, so you're going a lot of your engaged tanks is gonna be around portal keys or like really next to your teammates because a lot of them have abilities that comp- that help out teammates. So instead of going off and like doing your own thing as a sprinter, trying to support your team by being annoying and stuff, tanks are always should always be next to a person, next to a teammate, or a portal key. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me let me turn on mm-hmm. gaming gaming mode. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, just prevent me from pressing the wrong buttons. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. so with, that's basically tanks. Uh, the you really do support in a very different way. Like, all the tanks play differently. Justice is there to take absorb damage. I mean, all of them mm-hmm. are there to absorb damage, but they support the team very differently. Justice is more you're taking all the damage because he has a special guard. Mm. And so he can draw attention and he's really annoying to kill. If you don't have certain cards. So. Yeah, Justice is like one of the best door tanks out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. once, once he doors over, he can survive for a really long time until his teammate goes to him. Jin is uh, a partial door thing. I, wi- I still think walking Jin is one of the better ones because her, mm. her HA really heals the team by a lot. Like the percentage mm. of the teammates help. So uh, she's better off not staying in a portal and assisting the team in uh, an actual fight with stuns, with HS steel, and with her revive HS. Then uh, mm. Gustav is the special one. This guy here is... This guy here just... Me... Yeah, he, he just has so much HP and defense that mm-hmm. he is there to soak up the damage while not... He's really... also extremely mobile for a time. <laughs> Yes. So instead of like with justice, you're sitting there blocking for Jean, you're going to be around your teammates healing. Gustav, you can walk around and like basically do whatever you want. 
You can knock down opponents with cards. You can stun them, cause status effect. You can also tank really well by portal by uh, portal dancing is the term. Mm -hmm. So so you have a lot more options when and, you come to invite. And Gustav, one more thing is uh, he his HS is pure damage, like like mm. it's always ninety percent of the current HP of the opponent. So, because of how mobile Gustav is and how fast his AoE is, he u utilizes slight casting extremely well. He can hit you from like six squares away if you are not careful and he is already in position. And there are also builds where there's Bujutsu Gustav, which makes. Oh. which is terrorizing because. He can slide cast at least three squares away, making the AoE oh. range to be up to seven squares. <laughs> he just he just slides, and then you are hit by the AoE. You don't even know why. But that's that's with Bujutsu on, and I've eaten things like orange good stuff, brilliant good stuff. So so he can do stun, he can do knockdown, he can do damage. He is an all rounder mm. tank who has one huge problem. He takes that ten percent damage every every few seconds. So mm. that, that that's the pretty much good stuff. That's why Gustav is one of the top most played heroes in higher tier, simply because of how versatile he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's... Just a walking HP sponge that can hit you hard and disrupt you easily. Yes. So so tank wise, remember it's always about taking the damage for taking the hit for your team, and making sure your mm -hmm. opponents are not standing, like making sure your opponents are still. They shouldn't be moving about. If they are constantly moving about and you are tank just sitting there, then something is wrong. Because this means your mm -hmm. team is in a three v two, and you are no longer contributing to a fight. And also one of the reasons why justice is so hard to play. Okay, uh, that's it for the rose. Um, we will now talk about the stats multipliers of a character and how you really want to build a deck. Now, uh, mm. best case scenario, best character that I will actually use this as an example for is going to be Matoi. Now, why Matoi is mm. because uh, she's a gunner and she excels at DPSing because of this thing here. Uh, you will see that up here there's the attack, st attack stats. Her attack stats is at 1.4. Alright, so when you build a deck, right, what are the things that you look out for first? Now, for me, I definitely look at character multiplier. Mm. Uh, yeah, you, you want to play to the character strength more than anything when building a deck. Mm -hmm. Like even even if the the only two things that I look out for first is one the character stats two will be the cut cast time. Now the cut cast time is secondary to the stats because a character needs the stats to play well. Matoi needs attack cards to play well, and her cut cast is well basically uh she she can cast melee she has a fast melee as well as uh what's that called yeah there's the fast melee and then fast aoe her ranking key is also mm -hmm. pretty decent uh but here's the thing i prioritized attack multiplier over card casting for matoi due to her reliance on normal attacks however when it comes to a character that doesn't rely on normal attacks that much, which is Kai, I go straight into, let's see my Kai deck here, I go straight into a deck that doesn't rely, uh, that doesn't really boost his attack that well. Like Kai has a 1.45 multiplier, you would think that you want to build, you want to get the highest attack value cards you have in your pool just to build him as a full attack stats, but no. I ended up building him in a more defensive method. Oh wait, there we go, this is the one. Alright, I ended up building him in a more defensive method 
because one he is just he's too card reliant like i don't even use leon anymore let's let's see uh let, let me switch it up a bit to show you guys what i usually do for kai these days like basically for kai i just try to make it so that he can survive as long as possible without dying Mm. Yeah, so Kai is someone who relies on his passive to get in because one, he cannot be stunned, but he can still be knocked down. Two, uh, he has high attack, which means his burst damage is going to be very good. However, this burst damage that comes with a uh, setback that is he doesn't have shields most of the time, if he gets hit by defense down, uh, he will die almost instantly even if I have defense up, especially Mama. So I run two melee cards on him so that uh, the damage comes out immediately on hit. Alright, I don't, mm. I, don't, I don't do things like range where he has to stand there for two seconds, three seconds and take all the hits and then die. Or I don't do things like uh, Rengeki, which he's supposedly good at. I don't do things like Rengeki where because this deck was not meant to punish and kill people. Kai to me is more of a support where he can HS. I mean he can H his HS is extremely good at countering during a team fight. Mm. His HA is super good at protecting teammates when they are taking damage or usually protecting your tank. And mm. lastly, he has decent movement speed. A little slower than Adam, but he has the movement speed that allows him to chain into things like Kanone and Fluke when needed. If he lands a Kanone, he can uh, combo it into HA. If he lands a Fluke, uh, he can... De depending on how you're positioned, you can you can combo your HA and your HS into the fluke, which usually results in a kill as well. Then these two cards, because of the cast time, of no cast time into the short cast, I use this to heal because everybody will be on top of me every time I enter a fight. That's pretty much uh, the, how I play my Kai and how I build the deck around it. So one is... Built around the character stats, the character mm. multiplier. If they rely on, uh, if they really rely on normal attacks and they have high attack values, build just build just build a full deck that plays around it, like this. This is a full attack that you see that I have eight hundred ninety one. Compared, if at a lower level, compared to my Kai deck, which is a hundred and ninety, but I have almost. Uh, 150 lesser attack, but way higher defense, due to how Kai plays. Uh, uh, how how do what do you look out for when you are building your decks, Lila? Mm. Usually it's the same thing. You want I would use to capitalize on character strength. So you know, Matoy. For me, for Matoy, I would pretty much use the same deck you would use. Wait, so we'll go back to your deck. Yeah, about the same, except that I like uh, to be a little more def shield choices. So I would probably use uh, instant cast time shield instead of no guard. Just so in case, like, I get, like, bursted down, I have something to, to use and then immediately get back up. So like a like a diva or Jaeger. yeah like a diva or Jaeger if you have yeah mm -hmm. yeah for Kai I like to do the opposite actually while you like a close range I like long range just because I can take advantage of that big attack multiplier so I can use stuff like Inazuma or Humbuster and I can just get them down to like 75 to 85% HP immediately or force a shield, even though like the animation, because the animation is, is pretty fast. So we're, so we're looking at something like uh, this. Yeah, something like that. But I usually run one long range and range. So Inazuma kind of... Inazuma kind of... Would... Yeah, because yeah. yeah. if if they're long range, then I use Inazuma as quick cooldown. It's instant cast, 
if they're close range and they shield and they try to approach me, I can use Kanone and threaten them. And I I really like a burst heal, so I'd probably I'm probably always gonna be using some sort of instant shield like Diva, and then some an instant like a full instant heal, like Gabriel or Gearmaker like you have. Hmm. Okay, so yes, that's pretty much it. Uh, how we do uh how we start with building a deck. It's not the end yet because uh, when building a deck, not only do you have to take note of your character multipliers and your mm -hmm. deck stats because all the, all the cards have uh, provide different stats. You want to play to the advantage of your character. But the next thing you have to look out for is elements. All right? Mm. Uh, elements, uh, I only have a few characters that have all three elements in it. This is my deck for Maria. Unfortunately, it's at a pretty low level. However, because of how uh, how she relies heavily on uh, normal attacks, her yeah, her, mm. norm, her normal attacks, I run three elements on her. And I make it, I do it in a way where after every hook, right, I can guarantee the kill. That's why all these cards you are use, uh, seeing, right, all have attack stats, including this wife, which if I had at level 30, I would have a much better time. So, uh, when, when building elements, the first thing I look out for is whether or not the character requires normal attacks to win. Because uh, mm. the next... The only other attack that you can downswipe is dash attacks. So to put you put two and two together, after knowing if a character relies on a normal attack like Matoi, then mm -hmm. you build her you build a deck that has all three elements around it. Every time your opponent uh, goes into a different element, you will be able to do the maximum damage every single time. Because 1.2 is a lot. 1.2 mm -hmm. on top of the elemental advantage, it actually is 1.4. So mm -hmm. for Matoi, especially Matoi and Adam, all right, this, these two characters have a special thing that is the elements that they use, right, deals an additional 20% damage. So uh, the thing about Matoi is uh, even if you only have the red downswipe, okay, if you, if you only downswipe red, right, you will still do 1.6 times against uh, 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 an element you are of a disadvantage to. Which means it minus off the 20%, you actually still do everything uh, due to the, the amount of damage that a uh, usual attack with a deal. Mm. Yeah, so when again uh, when you're playing Matoyu, right, I always try to have at least two red cards. Same for Adam, I always try to have two blue cards because both of them actually relies on their normals quite often. Mm. Uh, a guy who doesn't rely on normals often, who we're going to be looking at now, is going to be people like... Uh, where is he? A guy who just spam cards. Tada! Oh yeah, Tadaomi is up there. What am I talking about? So Tadaomi is the one that I don't really bother with element because one, his normals are so slow. His normals hits really, really bad. When I go in right, and he's always in close, uh, in the near range where I have to be able to react with guard during the uh, during the fight itself i must make sure that uh i have a gut cut ready at all time and a standard tadaomi deck that we will be looking at is here yeah that's it <laughs> yeah that's that, that's it that's kanone <laughs> and and we, no, no 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 the gut has to be an instant gut we, we know that yeah, if, mm -hmm. you, if, if you don't if you don't use there you go. There yeah, you that go. that's a standard tadaomi deck now uh mm -hmm. The the reason why I don't even I I, I don't even need Gearmaker for this. Actually Gearmaker doesn't really help my cause because uh nowadays Tadaomi can't even kill characters like Need Hawk. So I, I might I will actually build it so that I have more HP and or the Mm. Or I use a magic square then I totally don't run heals. Uh, the the point here is in a in a 
when building your deck, you need to determine for yourself whether or not you need all three elements. Tadaomi can run this because even after the fluke and he is left with just blue, most of the time you are not going to be downswiping. In the event that you do downswipe, you are doing it as a defensive measure. You can, when, when you are getting hit, and you know that your opponent is in the correct, uh, more advantageous elements. It is recommended that you downswipe to the correct element when running away to block off as much damage as possible. This is especially so mm. when you are using a melee character against a gunner. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, for so, me... So, so. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah. For, for, me, for me, elementals are like that. Uh, is there... Is there Anything that you look out for when doing this? Uh, strong, well, yeah, <laughs> strong single hit characters in their normal attack, like Tadaomi and others, because I can't think of any on the top of my head right now. Like Tadaomi or Matoi, they don't really need all elements because Matoi is just down swiping red the entire time, and Tadaomi is using his card mainly cards. But for characters that have multi-hit attack, so a lot of the gunners, uh, Noho is a really, really good example for this. Because not only do you want to have all three, usually have three elements, because their attack is extremely multi-hit and it's laggy. So you want to be making sure that each attack, you have the maximum amount of damage. So that way you're doing 1.5 attack multiplier and the downswipe multiplier. And you you can also, since Noho is a melee character, you can downswipe to the opposite uh, elements of the opponent so you can have yourself a little bit more defense and survivability. That I'm actually surprised you apply lag in this, <laughs> into this calculation. No, 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 like if because when she starts oh, as in, it as in the the recovery yeah, 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 okay yeah, the, the normal recovery, recovery. recovery. okay that, okay. That, that 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 surprised me a little I don't, I don't, I don't, I... <laughs> okay okay so so that, that that makes sense now okay so so because some of the, the characters right once they start the normals and then when it's multi hit right they can't really cancel it and uh you mm. you have to hard commit and the moment you hard commit right there's only two things you do you can't cancel it if the opponent is going to uh, counter you, like Noho, during a normal, she can actually cast Rengeki to prevent the long down. Uh, mm. Or you downswipe and make sure uh, you can confirm the kill. Uh, especially, this is <laughs> this is especially true for Noho's that runs Kiteru. Yes, mm. they, they are out there. Because, because once they land the stun in, right, it's almost a guaranteed kill when it comes to Noho. Uh, mm. the Even same... on tanks like Justin, with the right setup. Yes. Uh, got Marcos is he the same thing. Healthy. Yeah. yeah. Ma- 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 Marcos is the real guy that relies on just normals. He mm-hmm. will... He... he smacks people with a stick. <laughs> yeah. And and you want to downsoid Marcos whenever the chance you have, especially when you already have a shield on and you are chasing people down. The the extra mm-hmm. 1.4 on, uh, on the correct element will kill most people. So take note of that when you build a deck, and if you think about it, if you are using a you are selecting a character that relies heavily on normals, do bring, do take elements into account. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. But uh, sometimes uh, when you run like just like one or two cards, or maybe the occasion one color card, it's okay to just down swipe. You just have to be aware of what your opponents are doing or whether they down back or, or no. Mm. Because uh, I, I feel like less less people know about down swiping now. Even though it's in the tutorial, it's, like, it's just something like out of a lot of people's mind. Yeah, because... because... Like, I, swear, I don't see it that often, even in high rank. No, the, the thing is everybody is scared of down swiping. So you don't see it when mm-hmm. fighting melee characters. Now, melee mm-hmm. characters all have to react when a card comes at them, especially if they have a shield on, or they have to try and bait things out. So if they downswipe and they aren't able to cast a card in time, right, they will get stunned or they are dead. So uh, what mm-hmm. happens there is everyone downswipes in advance. You don't downswipe when you are attacking. 
you down swipe mm. right before your uh, the opponent is about to reach your attack range. Yeah, we 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 can we can talk about that during the battle tips because that's one of the things that uh you want to be looking at. Uh, uh mm. I think we pretty much covered everything about elemental uh, elements and downswipe when building your deck. So mm. let's continue to one of the most important things, which is cut startup and uh, animation. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll give a brief rundown to everyone on what this means in particular. And one of the best examples we have, right, is somebody who is good at some stuff but slow at everything else. Oh. Yeah. Like, you know, well, Zack is a one trick pony thanks mm. to his cast time. Alright? Mm -hmm. So he has a uh, fast melee, mm. like uh, the fast melee cards, uh, medium or at a standard range speed, mm. cast time, and uh, this is slow AoE, and I believe his Rengeki right. is uh, not that great. There should be a different symbol for Rengeki. It should be like a bit. It's not slow, it's a biz. It's a... <laughs> it's yeah, it's really bad. Okay, we get that. Okay, okay. so the thing about uh, uh, cut animations here is that there is this thing called cut start up that you will see over here. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a mouse over that particular thing because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's there, written there, it's just shots. There's the kanji for shot. There are three types mm -hmm. of startup. One is no startup. And then, uh, and then this is short startup. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have the long startup, which is all the way in the range cuts. Our, our most, our favorite Leon is long startup. Mm -hmm. All right. The thing, the thing about this is that uh, cut startup is very important in during the game itself when during the startup of each card right you can be interrupted and you will get knocked back and where why the character cast animation comes in when building your deck right is because the card startup doesn't just include what the card, uh what startup the card itself has so it includes the character startup so Zack is going to have one of the fastest faster melees in his mm -hmm. deck. If you use a range card and you use Leon, it's going to take two years to cast it. On top of AOE, mm -hmm. uh, we will let's let's go into training mode so that we can have a much better example. So we want mm -hmm. one of each cards. Uh, let's give him melee. Zack is Zack is a melee guy. Mm -hmm. Then we let's use Shiryu. Let's Shiryu, Shiryu, Shiryu knocks back lesser. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Leon, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Rengeki. You you mentioned it's it's extremely bad. Yes. Yeah. Then uh, it's it's disgusting. <laughs> you really don't like it, do you? No, no. Yeah, that's one of each card type. We're good. Okay. Okay. So when you build the deck, on top of just looking at the stats. And looking at the element, and looking at uh, what type of cards that you want, you want to to complement the character. You have to look into cast time. All right, Zex Melee, his real only cut. Yeah, the, the only real thing he can use. Is, you can see it takes around mm -hmm. uh, one second for it to come out. I think I believe it's a zero point eight or zero. Actually, one point one second for the booting to start like up. It. Yeah, he can. So so during that period of time when he starts it up, he can still be hit during the zero point eight second. However, because Fluke is instant cast. Okay. Uh. Mm -hmm. By the time this thing comes up, by the time he starts swinging, right, he will no longer get knocked down. So zero, zero, zero point, maybe lesser. Melee cards are really fast. However, because of how stupid his long range is, on top of how slow Leon is, <laughs> that that animation, right, that range animation, right, the the part that when he wave his hand. He oh, can be totally. knocked down and he can be... He, he's basically going to die 
during that period. So you run forward, you do a melee. Yeah. Yeah. He he can only be knocked back in the very, very first zero point eight seconds, which is really, really fast. Over here he can even even he one I think I think the activation only starts when he puts his hand in his pocket. And that that's like horrible. What about what about this? Let's take a look. It's one that the for that one is one the in the scythe when he swings it. it yeah, when when the scythe is it, he can still be hit up right before then. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Then, yeah, that's terrible. And over here, same thing. Okay, the, his ranking key is actually quite okay. He's just lasts very long and takes too long to finish. But uh, he has to finish this in you before he starts hitting. Just hit him. <laughs> then this after. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So so so. Everyone, when you are looking into building a deck, please take note of your character startup and the card startup that you are using. Now, the mm -hmm. getting flinch or getting knocked out of a card is going to be a very common thing if your entire deck consists of long startup cards. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's give them everyone a huge uh, and extremely bad example of how not to build a deck. Uh, I believe we've got... Yeah, we can do this. We can do this. I already have two Leons, I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you build a deck like this and also ignore your character card time, every mm -hmm. single one of these cards that you use is going to get cancelled, even Rengeki. Alright, just now you rara rank uh is instant cast time, but when you, you use it on a Zack, you can still be hit out of it because here his mm -hmm. cast time is so slow. So uh the three parts of a card cast it's cut animation, it's cut startup, the part where you can get cancelled and knocked away. The cut activation, which you have to take into account because some uh Rengeki activation tends to be the longest. It only ends when the full 10 hits are finished and during that time you cannot move at all. Same apply for range cards. You will be punished for it if your character is not good at that. Every character has different cut activation animation as well. Like uh, on a Gilgamesh, he does the full 10 hits within 2 seconds. No hole is also two seconds, but when you do it on a Ririka, she does she she takes like three point four seconds to complete the full ten hits, and no three to four seconds start up and then two. Was it? Is it that bad? Is it... Because she's summoning all of the energy. <laughs> she summons her energy first. Yeah. And then she attack, and then then she's. Yeah, it is it, just terrible. So so. During mm -hmm. the activation, even though you cannot be knocked off, right? Everybody will be just walking away from your attacks. That's pretty much it. And then, and then finally, uh, I think Ririka will be the best one to show the recovery animation for mm -hmm. everyone. Like over mm -hmm. here, she can still be hit during the charge up. The animation takes around two to three seconds to finish, and at the end of mm -hmm. it, all right, she has a zero point something second of recovery. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay, she, she, she still has to take the time to finish off the animation by keeping her wand. You can see here, let's, let's do one last one. So, then she keeps the wand. Mm -hmm. That animation itself also took around like 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. During those time are uh, free attacks from your opponent. So, when you mm -hmm. build a deck, please take note of your card startup, card mm -hmm. activation, and card recovery. If you don't know how mm -hmm. to look at it, at least just take note of your card startup and be mm -hmm. sure that uh, you don't take too much damage or get stuck in the same animation for too long. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it on my end for card animations. Is there anything else you want to add on? Not really, but Marcos is a really, really good example just in general for all types of cards. <laughs> and just simple deck building because his thing is all of his stuff is slow or normal like or normal so if you want to use aoe so building a deck for someone like mark is really simple because 
you're not going to be using any offensive cards, so you just have to worry about defensive options like shields and heal. You don't have to worry about any attack because your normal attack is enough and it's your best option. Mm -hmm. But for other characters, you know, yeah. make sure you look at your card activation time, you know. And there's an argument for like, oh, but I have this card at level, I have, you are at uh, level 40, and its stats are really, really good, because Zach has 1.2 attack multiplier, so even if I don't use it, I can just have it in the back there, just for stats, right? Yeah, but, but you lose even, a card. Even you lose a card, so I'd rather there be like a full, even like an, a common card, like an N or R card than just having a card just for stats. I'd rather, like, constantly, like, okay, I have this, 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 and this to work with. I have four options rather, rather than three. Yes. You so, so for some, so sometimes is just the saying that it's like, oh, I'm going to use it for stats. Don't worry, don't worry. No. At least for me, I prefer, I prefer the function of the card versus the actual, like, stat mm. for it. Okay, yeah, yeah. That uh, I mean, I mean, if the character can't cast the card well, but you have a level yeah. forty version of the card, you might still not want to use it, because mm -hmm. it just doesn't it just doesn't contribute into a team fight well enough or into the general pace of how compass work. You want to be doing something at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, you're either charging or you're doing something. You you don't you don't just stand there unless you have a really good advantage. Okay, then uh, that's it for our uh, card animation when it comes to deck building. Okay, we will go into the actual things itself uh, on the second half of this. And uh, the next thing we want to talk about is PS cards, which is one of the yeah. most simplest topic, which is uh, do we recommend PS cards uh, or when do you put it in the deck? All right, mm. the answer from me is basically... Only use it on characters that have two things. High attack multiplier mm -hmm. and good cast time for that card. So almost mm. every no-ho in the game runs a Urara because of this. Right, Pierce, Pierce card is amazing because they can deal damage through shields and defense up. But the stats, the amount of damage you do with Pierce cards, right... Is directly based off on what base attack you have. So Himetaru and attack buffs or even Ririka buffs does not increase that damage. And it, defense down, correct? Yeah. So it 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 just doesn't affect. It is not. It is fully reliant on how strong your base attack is, and your base attack is calculated. Sorry, wrong button. Oh no. Okay, your base is your base attack is calculated by the deck attack times your attack multiplier. So the higher your attack multiplier, the stronger the PS card is. Now, uh, no, no, let's just use Noho as an example. Now, for her, most people run Rengeki uh, multi-hit because uh, everything else is just not fast enough. And Leon, Leon Pierce does not do enough damage to kill. So she can be very good at using Leon if you manage to cut cancel it. Look at the damage. Mm. There's, a, there's like a 6 to 8 times 6, so it's almost 3k damage. It will kill a Kokoriko or Sun. Let's give this a try. Because mm. they have low HP. Yeah, they almost died. Oh. Yeah, okay. So uh, what about uh, Urara? Urara, on the other hand... Yep, so that's half a HP of a tank is way more. If we are to use a URL and the other 13 here, he is probably going to die. Now, you don't want to use it on someone with negative attack multiplier pierce cards uh, on these characters because it is just not going to benefit much and the damage dealt is abysmal. Like, mm -hmm. On Noho, if I can't even kill a level 1 tank just with one URL, imagine using it on a character that has negative attack multiplier. It 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 won't mm. even deal three K or be significant enough that 
it will help in the cause of the battle. People people are going to might even just ignore the whole thing and do life steal mm-hmm. on you and get the health back. So Pierce cards for me, when you want to build it, uh, I I will always make sure the guy has positive attack and can cast the card properly. So the best people we are looking at is Gustav for the AOE orange. No doubt about mm-hmm. that. Then we are looking at Kai, 1.45 attack. Then we are also looking at Gilgamesh, 1.35, and the Rengeki is mm. hell of fast. Needhawk, same thing, Rengeki. Eyes is one of the best PS user because she can use both mm. AoE and Rengeki. Um, mm. Anything you want to add regarding PS cards? Uh, no, that's pretty much, you covered it all very well. Uh, another good Pierce car user is Levi is extremely strong with Pierce car. Yeah, they leave. Especially with Urara. Because his passive activates on every single hit of it. So you're getting so ma- so much attack so much, so fast, you're ignoring their defense, and you're ignoring their defense and shields. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. The, 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 the passive doesn't actually affect the Urara damage itself. It doesn't affect the Urara damage, but right after. Yeah. As you already am. If you land the knockdown, your next normal hit is going to be crazy. Crazy good. It's, yeah. gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna kill or hurt very bad. <laughs> All right, then, uh, yeah, that that is pretty much it for Pierce. Remember, if you if, don't just look at a Pierce card and then put it in your deck thinking it is going to work on everyone. No, it doesn't. Just make sure you look at the stuff we before. Look at the activation on the card. Look at the active. All right, uh, there's a slight problem. I think I think I think you got cut off there, so you want you want to repeat. Oh. Again. Yeah, <laughs> look, oh. you want to repeat your sentence yeah, again. Look at the card cast time on the card itself, and then look at the card cast time on the on the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm. pretty much it. And mm. uh, next topic on our deck building is oh wow, the door tank versus the walking tank. Mm. Oh wow, okay. So, uh. Door tanks for I think I think you I'll let you take this one because door tanks for me is very straightforward. If mm. the tank is someone who can survive, then it's a door tank. If it's not, mm. I am always building it as a walking tank. Uh, a, a difference mm. here is going to be like this. Okay, I'm going. Uh, this is a walking tank. This is Violetta right now. Although she's mm. it is honestly not a great example because it's a very interesting view that I learned about recently. The walking tank, I just apply everything I have on the stats. They just have extremely good stats. So for Violetta, because of her defense and her passive, right, I just run most of the defense cards on her. On top of a stun beat, this is for a card combo, which we will talk about later. But if it comes mm. to a Jean, or uh, it comes to a Justice, this is the deck I use. Mm. So, and uh, for those of you who are new to the game, the card but we're when we talk about door, we're talking about the card door. Yeah, this thing, it basically it... means that if you use it, you choose a point on the map, a cap, a key, and you just automatically teleport there. That's pretty much it. Yes. It's really, really strong. And because you instantly teleport there and it's a tank's job to guard a key, a lot of people tend to put put it on door uh door on tanks and then just just sit there and well take damage and secure the point. It's really useful at the start of the match for gaining control and it's really good at the especially at the end of a match when everyone's contesting a point like C and let's say you just died and your teammates are dying and you respawn, you can instantly get back in there and help maybe save some people or clutch out the point. So th- this is basically my door tank deck for justice. Like mm. like these days, the only door tanks I really ever use is Megumin, uh, mm. Justice, uh, Ren. Mm. Ren, yes, definitely a door tank. Mm. And I think, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, Nobu, Nobu, Nobu is one of those. Uh, 
these four guys have one very simple mechanic that uh, applies. I mean, even Jin has that mechanic, which is they, they have their passive tends to help them survive longer. Mm-hmm. And this is the reason why this man here is not a door tank for me, because his passive mm-hmm. kills him. And then uh. The Thomas is another one. He's not a door tank because his passive kills him. Is there, is there any tank I'm missing? Because we really don't have... Oh yeah, it's Kuma. Monokuma. Yeah, Monokuma is not a door tank for me either. Because his, his, his passive is there just to irritate people. <laughs> and uh, The good walking speed. You don't really need door. Like, so for example, he was talking about Violetta. Violetta has good walk speed, right? So she doesn't really need door, but at least for me, I like having like a panic button. Like door I use as a panic button. So it's like at the beginning of the match, right? I can look over and it's, if like I'm out getting C and a teammate dies at A and there's no one there, I can use it to go and save the point. For And like I said before, at the end of the match, I like really having that when everyone is like firing off their HS, which can like kill people in one hit or everyone's using like extremely powerful attack buffing cards i like having the option to just you know hang back right and then come in at the last with with door especially in if since uh they you can interrupt their cap their portal capture animation with door so you can door in for free for free, as in you won't be taking extra damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because because get, yeah. you you are really there just to interrupt. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, to interrupt yeah. and just secure that point. Yeah, that's how. Or like one of the timer so that they even if you die after using door and but there's only like three seconds left, they're not gonna get it. Hmm. So so if you ever see a walking tank, uh, this is pretty much it. If you do a deck build, and mm-hmm. if if you think about a tank and you have, don't be of the mindset where a door and a tank must go hand in mm-hmm. hand because yeah, that, that, like, that is I, really I, not the case like for me when I started out I said like oh I, the only tank I have is justice and I don't have door I can't play him I need my door right mm-hmm. but there's also just because a tank doesn't have door doesn't mean like oh Oh, they're useless. They're not going to be doing anything. They can still do their job really well. It's just that it just helps with mobility. If you if someone on your team has like a speed buff card, then they're fine. But also not having door, it opens up a free space for them to run something else. So maybe instead of door, they can run a team heal or a team attack buff. Or maybe they can run another attack if they have high HP, like Justice. Or maybe they can run a stun for Gustav. It really depends on your your own play style and how you like how you approach situations like that. Mm. Also, for door tank, if you use it at the start of the round, you only get one more use of it throughout the match. If you use it midway through the match, that's the only one. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's really like a card lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to commit. You have to commit. So think think about that, and uh, when you build a deck, uh, decide whether you need not you need the door, especially with the, uh, if you're playing a good stuff. Please, I I I don't I really don't recommend door good stuff. They exist. They mm. really do exist, even in high rank, but they are just not that great. I've seen. Uh, unless they are supported by the team. I've seen Dog Gustav with two other teammates healing him. Have you, mm-hmm. If you have ever seen a Gustav with a Thomas, which is which happens off season, that's unkillable, man. It's, it's pure, <laughs> yeah, it's pure BS. Okay. Uh, next topic mm-hmm. now uh, is gonna be one of the most major things that uh. Everyone should be thinking about, especially when building a deck. All right, this is this is way more in depth than just looking at stats and everything now, because this is the rank mindset. We are looking at how to build a deck when you are playing rank. Mm. All right, so for reference here, although you see that I'm in S six, 
I am constantly fighting people at 220 and 240. <laughs> uh, I see Onis every single day and I do farm in S6 for energy. I'm at 0 over 500 for very good reasons because I've been uh, I've been screwing around <laughs> with different yeah. decks. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 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 But, mm. but here's the thing. If you really want to climb in rank, you need to bring meta cards. Alright, for mm-hmm. me, one of them is meta cards. The second thing that applies is always cards that boost yourself or weakens the enemy. Now, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna put up four cards that does this super well. Mm-hmm. Mama. Yeah, it's like like break all break. four of them are right up there. And Andrew? Yeah. No, he met Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Taiwa, Mama. Shield Breaker and Himetar. Okay, this four cards is Oni Killer. Like they are the they are the only things Onis worry about. I I would even say worry about. They 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 see it every single round. The reason mm. for this is because especially Himetaru. Uh, okay, the reason for this is because this is the only way you as someone with lower stats is going to take out someone with way higher stats than you. Mm-hmm. It boosts attack. Yeah. Yeah, but this is by 1.4. Mm-hmm. Okay. Taiwan and Himetaru boost your stats. Mama and Shieldbreaker reduce the enemy's defense. And two very important things. Taiwa, although it's only slightly higher than Himetaru, which is 1.5 mm-hmm. compared to 1.4, this card boost your entire team's attack which allows you to mm-hmm. contribute in a very right. efficient manner yeah especially when you know you are going into a team fight P- uh, your team has successfully landed a stun you can mm-hmm. tie over and your entire team is going to go for the kill of course if your if your uh, sprinter is a peer that's something else <laughs> but otherwise yeah. Yeah, if it's the... just gonna be, there's nothing wrong with using it. It's only gonna then. Mm. No, but, but but if your your sprinter is someone who can stun and can also do a bit of damage, Taiwa is going to like break down teams. The same. The, the thing about Mama is this is for gunners mainly, especially gunners mm. because they tend to have extremely high DPS. Uh, especially the mm. multi hit guys. Uh, Maria Maria is the only one that is a bit special. So if you, Mama is used every single time when you fight a Oni. It's one of the best ways to kill a Oni because it reduces their defense to zero. In compass, mm. the damage is calculated by attack your attack value times the multiplier of the card minus of the opponent defense. So when the opponent has zero defense, right, you're doing hundred percent damage on everything that you do to your opponent. Uh, mm. the only way they can survive is they pump everything into HP, which changes the game by quite a bit, of course. But if mm. you manage to mama them, right, chances are you are going to be able to kill off that uh attacker or gunner whom you weren't able to take out earlier due to how high their defense stats was. Case in point, the latest character, this man. So, Ryunosuke, his his defense is really up there. On an average attack stats deck that people pump in, right, his defense is around 400 to 500. So, without mm. Mama, and your normal attacks can't even go past 500, right, you're only going to be able to do one damage to him. Uh, mm. With Mama, every hit you do will be at 100%. So, uh, depending on who you are using, you're going to be dealing like 400 to 500, even on Nidhogg. Nidhogg Nid- Mama Nidhogg users exist, but they usually don't do it only because his range is too low. Uh, but for Mama uh, Luciano, Mama Megu, they happen everywhere. And the only way your, your opponent can counter it is by using a shield. Same goes for Shield Breaker, which is one of the even better ones. Because before a team fight, if you use it, all your opponent's defense is reduced by 50%. And then it lasts for 20 whole seconds, which kind of 
yeah, it just kind of shift the balance to your favor if your team has a shield breaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what I do for rank games, and uh, the the way it's really about the stats, like even all the way at the start, right? Uh, if I am playing a sprinter and I'm trying to play a stun sprinter to maximize. Like Void Door. We always recommend Void Door as a stun sprinter. But for a way for me to maximize my contribution, I will build in one last thing which is all the stun cuts. So for 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 Void Door, this is pretty much how we do it. I think this is pretty much how everyone does it. We have a SR stun and then we have a UR stun where you can help it. And we have a guard and a heal. And this guard and a heal, right, is nothing attack based. One void door, void door has negative attack multiplier. Mm-hmm. And secondly, uh, void door has a passive that benefits her when she has much lower HP. Actually, when the HP is under 50%. So having as much HP as possible helps. So these four cards. All are HP based, as you can see. Um, none of them are under one thousand six. And my void door will, even though the HP multiplier is not really that high, due to how good the defensives, I will still get a decent amount of survivability. That is how I deal with only with void door. Uh, is there mm. is there any other ways you feel you can? people can deal with Onis, the way to build a well, deck to run around Onis. Well, well, if we're talking about stun, right, there's a there's a certain card huh? is there's a, you know the card. You know the card. This? There's a certain card. No, no, no. Abakan. But that card is a text stats. Yes. So, so it's a long range stun that has attack stats. So it might not be good for Void Doll, but it you it is also very good for attack oriented gunners. So it's a way for you to contribute outside your DPS if your deck level is low. So, so if you have someone like yes, yeah, this guy, yeah, it's you know, there, you know, yeah, it's. it's... Ryuno, or maybe even Luciano, because his passive boost yeah. it lowers the cool boost long range cards and lowers the cooldown. Correct. Correct right. by twenty percent. Mhm. So now you have a long range stun that deals some damage too because of his passive. That's quicker. That's quick. And it also hits five times. Each one of each time it hits, it stuns. So if they're if they have a shield and it runs out on the last hit and they hit that they'll get the full stun. It's a very powerful card. At, le- at least in my opinion, I think it's one of the best cards in the game. Just because it's a long range stun. For Voido, you you don't have to worry about it because you get up in their face and you can AoE stun or you can near stun and do whatever. But for a lot of other characters, it's really good just because of the extra range. Hmm. You, you, so you can support from afar. Like a lot of gunners use it as a defensive too. If somebody's mm-hmm. charging at them, the Abakan will be ready. And most attackers are waiting for that Abakan because we don't have a choice. If we get stunned by the mm-hmm. Abakan, chances are we are going to die. So if you find ways to bait out the Abakan or if you if you are like a, using an Amelia who likes to do mm. things like Abakan Kanone. Well, yeah, no matter what you do, you're kind of, as a as an attacker or sprinter with little to low HP, right, you are pretty much screwed. This this happens mm. way often. Uh, this, this type of Amelia decks happens way too often. The problem with mm. Abakan, although uh, it's the same as Leon, it is short cast. So that means mm-hmm. you would... You have to cast it. Yeah, you have to cut... Uh, the opponent cast, will uh, see it coming, basically. Mm-hmm. If you just use it by itself. So when, when you build a deck for rank, okay, uh, if you are already very clear that your 
stats doesn't matter. You are going to die in a few mm-hmm. hits. Make sure you put in cards that can contribute to your team and allows mm-hmm. you to survive for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, we don't, I, I personally don't recommend playing DPS when it comes to a certain rank that you really cannot keep up. 40 levels, mm-hmm. not a problem. Once it hits 80 levels... Uh, try mm, to switch yeah. around, play somebody else, because they have like they are going to four tap you, or five tap you, depending on even on a Gustav. If someone is eighty levels above you, you can actually contribute a lot as a Gustav because of your HP. But mm-hmm. you are still going to die fairly quickly due to how low your stats are. Yeah. Another way to contribute was okay. Stun cards are powerful. What if I don't have stun, right? There's other status cards that really do help. So, like, one of them, which I think gets underrated a lot, is silence. Silence is super, super. Because, or not silence, command, deck lock. I should call it deck lock. Yeah, it's okay. Deck lock it's, is, it's, it's called silence. It's, uh, it's really just called uh, silence. Okay. Yeah. It basically makes it so that they cannot use any of their cards for a fixed amount of time and that's really really strong and a lot of the silence cards are on kind like relatively short cooldowns yeah, look like, at this 18 seconds over here mm-hmm. 18, 18 seconds, seconds and it lasts seconds. Seconds, yeah on hit and it knocks down and mm-hmm. on top of that if you if luciano uses it it's actually it's actually fourteen seconds. So by the time yes. by the time yes. the the cast finishes and because the, the cooldown actually starts counting during startup, so by the time the whole thing finishes, uh, it the downtime is actually just two seconds. It's mm-hmm. pretty funny when you use it on the Luciano. Unfortunately, it's not a text stats. So most yeah, Luciano's it's more run. defensive. Yeah, it's more defensive, but I feel like this really strong regardless yep uh speaking of knockdown any card that can cause a knockdown i think is extremely strong when dealing with it because it allows your your teammates who are most likely only or high deck level themselves to finish the job so stuff like all range or silence or shadow or poison is really strong mm. yeah Poison, poison is like the top tier range cards at the moment because of the knockdown and the mm-hmm. extra forty percent damage that it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. So you notice that when we're talking about dealing with deck level player, we immediately just no 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 damage and we go straight to like the more supportive stuff like status ailments, knockdown. Even positioning with pull with pull cards like Cruelda, or maybe even like not as even a joke game bazooka, just pushing the opponent away. You, it's it's like sure, it's game bazooka. Yeah, it's yeah. mean, but it can actually have a place if you have yeah. the right char- if you have a I, character. I, with, I, uh, I, long. I have it at level forty. I know I can I can mm-hmm. up it to level fifty. Mm-hmm. Another <laughs> I'm, <in> the... <laughs> I'm just waiting for Game Bazooka go. That's gonna help. Um, and uh, another, the last really strong status ailment is HS Steel. Because a lot of characters' HS can radically change the game. It can go from a game like, oh, 30 seconds left, we're, we're gonna win, to it's, it's one second left. How'd they get the point? What? Uh, unfortunately, uh, long range HS still really is really hard to land because only the last hit steals. So you want to divert it to using the melee HS still instead. I actually have a level fifty version of the R card which I use on Jin, and it works perfectly fine. It, it doesn't steal that much, but the moment you steal twenty percent of a DZ or twenty percent of a Luciano, they are as good as screwed for the next thirty seconds to a minute. So mm-hmm. make make full use of that. It's really good. Don't sleep on status cards. They're really good. Mm. And that's pretty much all I have to say unless you want to get really niche stuff like running guard break or something. Yeah. Nah, that, for, for rank, or 
For rank, I think it's going to be okay because you, if you don't have the gut break, just run away. I mean, you can contribute, but it's too risky for you to be honest. So, uh, un until you are at a better deck level, right? Uh, try to be the guy who helps stun people and then survives without feeding. Because every time you feed, you are going to give your opponents more stats. So, uh, so for the deck building part, we have one last thing to talk about. About. This time, and uh, interestingly, it's not going to be about the cards. Okay, before we mm -hmm. end this very first deck building session, uh, or rather, uh, uh, before we end the first half of this bootcamp, the the thing we want to talk about is actually medals. So I'm gonna give you one of the most disgusting ones I have on hand right now. Which is our friend Pierre and uh, Jin. Okay, so how important are medals? <laughs> now the answer is, uh, I mean, the answer is actually uh, extremely important. Okay, so for medals, this is the last thing that uh, we will talk about as Leela has unfortunately disconnected. Uh, we, it's extremely important, like. I I personally rate medals more important than your deck levels. Now the reason for this is because depending on your medals and how you use it, you contribute way more to your team. Like re really way more. If you uh if you have this kind of speed medals that we are looking at, my PRA has 10% increased movement speed, as you can see over here, and 3% uh, increased HP. The HP is not my concern, the movement speed is my concern. What happens here is my PRA is able to land most of my cards as and when I need it, because he is actually the fastest character in the game. And with slight casting and uh, AOE cards that I usually use on him, like all uh, this silence and stun. I thanks to the medals that I have, I move so much faster than all the gunners in the game. I never really miss. They they are only allowed to block it off with guard cards, which I sometimes run a granite just for the fun of it. Then medals first, because even if you do not have speed medals. Right, you're not lucky enough to roll speed medals. You want to, on tanks, if you really want to contribute, you can have things like cooldown medals. Now, this cooldown medals, right? This this full setup of cooldown medals just reduced my entire cooldown by 15%. And my Jin deck is one of the crazier ones because I contribute by buffing my teams three times every game now as you can see here the taiwa let's take a look the taiwa all right my team here over here is uh 45 seconds this is 65 seconds so theoretically i can only use it twice and my portal key here is also 45 seconds so look at what happens when you have you manage to roll on medals so much that you get the medals that you want, which is mostly cooldown medals, speed medals, or attack medals. Yeah, attack medals, if you get an extra 15% attack on an attacker, is actually pretty crazy. So Taiwa used to be a 65 second cooldown. Take a look now. It's now 55. So I can use it three times every battle. Like, even if I wait uh, 20 seconds before the C fight starts, I use it, I will still most likely be able to use it another twice during the fight. Now, my portal key used to be 45 seconds, it's now 38 seconds. This means I can use it four times, and team here, four times as well. This is extremely good on tanks, the cooldown medals, as uh, it will reduce your brilliance cooldown. Yeah, even the brilliance to 30 or something seconds. That can help your teammate extremely good. This is this is what happens when most of the stronger debuffs cards have 
much longer cooldown. Yeah, imagine the evil Ruru on Gustav if I have all the all the correct medals on him. So don't neglect your medals if you can help it. You might be unlucky and you might not get all the plus three that you want. And you might end up with something like this. So you see, uh, this is just plus two, plus two, plus two, but, but this still gives me an extra 6.8% in movement speed, is which is more than enough to catch a lot of people. If you end up having something like this, uh, I only get, yeah, 1.7 times 3, I only get 5 point, 5 point, 5 point 5.1 or maybe... Uh, yeah, 5.1% in movement speed. I do have to reroll this in the long run. Uh, this Amairo is definitely way stronger, but I like this costume a lot more. So, uh, uh, take note that the medals itself are just as important because it allows you to land more cards in. Okay, we're going to take a break here and we are, we will do the second half of our, uh, our boot camp in a bit. Now, the second half is going to focus fully on um, battle tips that you will find super useful. So, do stay on and if you want to uh, hop on to the next section, just scroll down to the comments. We are going to put timestamps on this and I will see you in a bit. Thank you. Alright guys, uh, welcome to the second half of this Compass Bootcamp and this time we're gonna go straight to the battle tips which is uh, maybe more of the things that you guys want to be looking at. So uh, for a start, let's go straight into the first topic which is our HS Charging Tips. So, uh, when you start a game in a map like Star Park, what you want to do first as always is always take the B point first instead of the A. And in the event, or look at your mini map, in the event that someone's door over to your A, your, a, your entire team can run over to it and protect it. The reason for this is because uh, you really don't want to be the only one expanding a portal at all times. Like maybe uh, except for C when you are contesting it, the, uh, it is important to know that in order to charge your HS, you have to expand a portal. When you are expanding the portal, your HS, your HS actually charge faster than usual, and that's the best way to charge HS. So if you do it alone, your team members, your teammates won't be able to get any of the HS charge, and. This is one of the reasons why uh, certain games people become angry when you see that, especially when you're using characters like Luciano and Maria, then they are just charging on their own without regards of their team. You really don't want to do that. You need to, you need to expand. If you are expanding B just to protect it for later, run back to your A and charge with the Luciano before actually going into battle. This is how you get uh, uh, maximize the HS charge for your entire team. Uh, is there anything you want to add on, Leela? Uh, well, yeah. Just a lot of the HS intensive characters like Luciano, Mar Maria, Dizzy, a lot of them tend to charge by themselves because the thinking is that oh my hs is super strong if i get it fast then i'll be able to turn the tide of the game in our favor and then we can easily win but most of the time it, just one hs especially if the opponents already have gotten control of like c and two, the rest, two of your teammates are trying to fight for it, but you're the only one charging. It's just a bad situation overall, because they're probably gonna, the opponent probably is gonna have their HS. You're sitting there half the match doing nothing, and your two teammates are constantly dying because they want to try to get C back, and it's a two v three at that point. So, just play it by ear, you know. Look at your map. See where everyone is, what they're doing. If they're going towards C, 
then and you're charging maybe you should go help if they're everyone's just sitting back and laying low what just go to them and expand the portal with them so that way they can get hs and you can get your maximum hs charge from it so just have good map awareness and know what everyone's doing before you commit to charging so so really the tip the only tip we have here is don't expand on your own where possible unless you mm -hmm. there's absolutely or, or rather your team already has their hs and somebody is trying to capture your point and you are in, you have to go back and defend it that time you can expand but during the start of battle when everybody is empty do try to charge together at uh, all the time take b first if you have to but go back or let your team join you before you continue the expansion of the of the portal mm -hmm. key okay so let go uh, to our very uh, first proper topic uh, outside of the go. hs charge which we are going to show here which is slight casting okay so the concept of slight casting is actually uh, using the momentum of your movement and casting your card at the same time. What this does is actually, okay, you, you see that over here at this range, if I am to cast it, uh, alright, Lila is going to move to the edge of the skirt. If I am to cast it over here, he's not going to get hit. Uh, this is because the range is really not that high. Or rather, the range of a uh, Rengeki is uh, two and a half square. Yes, you can do one square, two square, two and, and a little bit in front. So, what you do when you do slide casting is uh, it use it uses the momentum and allows you to extend your range by like almost half a square to one square, depending on how fast the character is. The 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 mistake that most people make is actually casting the moving and then letting go of the movement before casting the card so what you do is you, you move then you cast the card Lila you can try it on your end you you move and then you let go of the movement then you cast the card at the range see I'm not being hit right here but slight casting on the other hand allows you to do so so Lila, uh, Lila stay still I'm gonna do slight cast on you you see that even though when I, I let go of the card when I reach this part my character continue to move forward while the activation occurs. So that is what slide casting does and this is what you want really want to make use for uh, of when trying to hit your opponents. It works for everything, even range cards. So over here I got a range card that is like really far away. Okay, uh, if I cast it here I will probably not hit. Yeah, around here. So I'm gonna walk back, I'm gonna slide cast the Leon here. Uh, okay, still didn't hit because uh, Levi's uh, range is really bad. But that's okay. So the the point of it is uh, use light cast in order to extend your range and make sure you are holding down to the whoa wow what was that? Make sure you are holding down to the movement button when casting your cards in order for the range to extend. We're gonna do it one last time. Okay, so that you can watch the slide happen. Okay. Alright, Lila, Lila, you can uh, show everyone so that everyone can see uh, how far you actually managed to do the extension. Uh, you sleep for half a square. And that's how you hit. So, the, the, the other application of slide casting is actually when you are jumping off layers. Alright, uh, as you already know, slide cast allows you to cast your cards and move slightly at the same time. So, when you are off, going off the ledge, you want to be able to slide cast in a way so that your activation, your startup of the animation happens at the top of the ledge and the activation happens in the air or at the bottom. So, Lila is going to be over there and I'm going to show you how to slide cast this. So you see, I, my startup is co uh, happening on the top where I won't get cancelled. Wow, I move half a square or even more due to the momentum of going off the ledge. So effectively extending the whole card uh, range by almost 2 to 3 squares. Now, uh, you want to make use of this to prevent getting knocked off when trying to save a gap or when trying to uh, prevent, uh, let's say, remove 
uh, in a way remove the startup to reduce the delay because after every cut cast right there is also the part of recovery all right it doesn't remove the recovery but it allows you to take out the the range uh, it allows you to remove the startup time that is happening in the yeah. uh, uh, This is super effective for cap defending points at sea like this and also allows you to cast your guard and shield without taking a uh, hit. Yeah, uh, Lila, do you, do you want to add on to anything regarding slight casting or is there anything that you are unclear about? And I can probably go into it. Uh... It's really useful. Like, we've shown you Rengeki and long range cards, but I feel like this truly shines with melee or near cards, especially with Tadaomi and Adam, because they're two really card heavy melee attackers. So, having that extra, like, a little bit of more range really just helps on landing and killing things, and yeah. it makes your job a lot easier. So like, uh, because they rely on the card damage mostly, mm -hmm. and if you really want to land those cards on top of getting your speed medals, make it faster, slight casting will help you uh, hit your opponent more as long as you are in range, which is why Bujutsu Adam and Bujutsu Tadaoni exist. Uh, mm -hmm. When just take note that this does not apply to just melee cards, it applies to debuff as well, which is where no hole comes in. No hole always, and make sure you always slide cast your magic square. The reason you slide cast your magic square right, is because once your magic square hits, you want to be in range for your ranking key to hit, and you don't have time to move again. Uh, to your opponent only gets debuff for 4 seconds, you want the Rengeki to come out instantly and you want it to hit. So you have to chain that Rengeki from a slight caster magic square for the full hits to take effect as soon as possible. So that's mm -hmm. mainly it for slight casting. Do take note of this technique because you should be doing it all the time. So to show it one last time, you cast the card while moving without removing your finger. So when you move, you hold the card up and then you let go of the card while still moving. Alright, do not let go then cast. If you let go of the movement and then you cast the slight cast will not happen, your range will not increase and you will lose the momentum and just stand there. Okay, that's pretty much it for slight cast. Let's go into the one, uh, the next topic that we talk about during deck building: downswipes. Now, oh, okay, downswipes element, as we mentioned, uh, we are both on green right now. What happens is, uh, you you get when you down when you attack someone and you downswipe, you deal extra damage. So I'm doing 900 now. Uh, uh, Levi, Levi has the Levi has the stupid uh, passive that increases damage every. Hit. So you're gonna see some exponential here, here, damage here. right here. Okay, so I'm gonna downside red, and you see that I'm doing 1,700. So the the thing about elements is uh, when you downside, you deal extra 1.2 times damage as it is written down there. And if you swipe to the correct advantageous element, you do an extra 1.2. So a total of 1.4 extra damage. Like uh, you see Lila attacking me, you just show them. Like I'm doing 939, and then after that you're doing uh, 1.2k. So it is a huge, it is really a huge difference when you're doing downswipe. And that's why when a character like, like Leia especially who uses uh, normal attacks very often you do want to try to have as many elements as possible within your deck now the fun part about downswipe is it also affects dash attack okay so uh, Lila can you do one without dash uh, without downswipe and another one with it. so 2096 which is the correct the 200% multiplier then you watch him do a downswipe <laughs> So that's an extra 40% increase from the dash attack itself on top of the 200% multiplier of your base damage that all sprinters have. 
uh, uh, however, you don't want to be down swiping all the time as a sprinter because uh, down swiping locks your deck. And if mm. you do that early, you are going to get hit. What most people do in cases is uh, your element is down for you. Okay, what most people do is we, we down swipe first, then we land the hit at the end of the down swipe so that. Uh, when, when you are in range, you can still react accordingly. So you do it from far away, and then you take a hit and you run away. Yeah, see that? See that? Okay, Lila, you can do it too. You could be at the max of your range, you downswipe, and then you run away. That's pretty much how it works. You have to downswipe early. Yeah. Okay, most good players, especially gunners, knows when to do it. So that even though they are down swiping at max damage, they will also be ready to cast their cards. However, for for characters that are melee dependent, that who characters like Levi or this who needs to really be dependent, you don't want to down swipe because you need to be ready for any shield, sword, and to other stuff. Yeah. All right. So take note of that when you are playing and try to extend your range with slide cast and do as much damage possible with down uh, as possible with down swipes. Especially for somebody who likes to do Is there anything you want to add on regarding down swipes and element changes? Uh no. I think you pretty much covered it. It's a strong tool, but like you said, your deck is locked during it, so you have to commit to the attack and get rid of your defensive options for a second. But if you know you're safe, then it's pretty much just free damage. Especially when the opponent is stunned. And oh, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the fun part here is, is try to stun me. Do do a stun on me and then try to switch to the correct element. A stun? Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys something interesting. So try to attack me. Okay. So uh, do you will notice that when you are stunned, you will not be able to down swipe. However, when you are knocked down, try to knock me down instead with a card, ranking key or something. <laughs> yeah, you have. That, okay, that, okay, okay, okay. That, that, that doesn't knock down. Oh, you zero. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, come. So stun, stun. Remember, you are still getting a uh, lock. So, you can actually down swipe when you are knocked down or knocked up to re uh, to reduce the amount of damage taken. The same, uh, the same applies when you are how to say knocked up and flying in the air to recover. You really want to do that. Levi, Levi is one of those whose HA doesn't allows you to fight anything, so you can't really do it in the air. But in the event that you do, try to swipe to the better element to reduce the damage taken. Uh, uh, down swipes element also affects cut damage. So now that I'm in red, uh, do do the Setokai on me. Okay, you see that Setokai is doing 965. And once I downswipe to green, it only start. Uh, it only deals around seven, six, eight. So this is the part where uh, you must be very clear on what elements your opponent tends to be using in order to maximize or minimize the amount of damage taken. Like for against the cutdown, try to always be in red. No, green. It, try to always be in blue so that you will take less damage from the fluke or else you will likely die from the 400% multiplier plus 20% on top of it. It's the same for Matoi, try to always be in blue and against Adam, try to always be in green. That way you will survive better during a fight itself, even in free battle. I think the downside is amazing in free battle. And uh, let's go into uh, the custom battle again because next up uh, we are going to show you how to about we are going to talk about portal key captures and timing. And back to Star Park we go. We want to talk about portal keys captures and timing, like how to capture a portal key, how to capture it faster. And how long it takes to capture each portal. Because knowing that 
may will change your win rate by quite a bit. Some people who don't understand, uh, who doesn't know the timing will spend time defending a cap that is definitely going to be lost. Or spend time, wa uh, waste time on a cap that will never be captured within the given amount of time. So uh, to do a quick one, uh, Eli, you can you can go capture all your points on the other side, especially A and X. Expand all of them so that we can do a quick rundown on how this works. So uh, okay. compass, compass is easy. Compass is a game about portal to capture. The more capture, the more portals you get at the end of the game. The the team that team wins. So uh, at C. Okay, let's start with the easiest one. C takes five seconds to capture. All right, DZ is the only character uh, that has a passive ability that reduces the time needed to capture portal keys. And the other way to reduce the capture time is by having capture medals, which can reduce it to up to another fifteen percent. So a five seconds portal capture at C. If it's a DZ, it will become a three to uh, three second capture, and if she has the portal key capture to reduce it by another fifteen percent, it will end up to be almost two point five seconds. Because the longer the capture is, the more the the more time the the medals reduce. Okay, so over at D, you're gonna get here. Uh, this is actually a ten second capture. You know, let me capture it. Let me capture it. Expand, okay, okay. expand it, expand it fully, expand it fully, so that people can see the timing. Okay, there we go. Alright. Yeah, so we started at 50 seconds. Okay, you, in order to speed things up, you hold the button down. So the capturing of uh, the B portal takes around 7 to 8 seconds, depending on the map. Some maps have slightly larger B which is not very often but that's okay and A is a flat 10 seconds for most people so we are going to be here at uh, 26 I mean if you include the start of the capture animation then it's going to be 27, 28 and you see that this is around 14 seconds there you go so A is uh, 14 seconds including the animation and D is going to be 10 seconds including the animation and C is going to be 5 seconds so uh, you can you can capture C so everybody can take yeah. remember including the animation is uh, 5 seconds so take note of this whenever you are in a fight because if you don't have the time to take C within the last 5 seconds then the game isn't as much as gone. If you are able to cast a HS that prevents your opponent to cap start the capture within the last 5 seconds, the chances are you have already won as well. Uh, the timing is um, uh, really important against characters like DZ because if they get to teleport within the last 10 seconds to Portal A or E, they can actually capture it due to how far, uh, the so-called 30% reduction time for capture. Alright, uh, that's pretty much it for my uh, portal key captures and timing. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about uh, is the cancelling of the capture, which is quite easy. In order to capture it faster, you hold down the movement, which is like casting a HA to cancel it faster. To cancel it, you just move away. Alright, uh, the, the, the cancel animation itself has to be done before the portal key fully lights up, because if you do it anytime, uh, after that, during the animation, right? Yeah, you are still stuck there. There is no cancelling for after capture. As you can try to move, but it doesn't, and you will get punished, especially if people are doing this to you. Now, um, the trick here is uh, what we want to talk about is actually portal dancing. So, L Lila, you are clear on what portal dancing is, I believe. Yes. Okay, so what happens is when you are in, you ha have the advantage and you have the portal key with you, all right, and you are fighting around here, just normal attack me and someone. Yeah, let's try, let's just fight here. Okay, normal attack. When you force yourself to move out, okay, just just do it right beside the portal. Oh, how come how come you're not? 
<laughs> do it right beside the bottom. Like right beside. Not the not the gate itself. I need you to you okay. like like right beside the bottom. Okay, okay. That's not portal dancing. I don't. Uh, okay, okay. Hmm? Portal dancing is making use of the capture effect to bait your opponent into the capture animation. Oh. Okay. Yes, that's that's how it works. So so if yeah. you are in a fight at sea, then you move away. You can bait your opponents into the capture animation, which they then have to cancel while you cast cards on them. Yes, I can do that. Right, so, so take note not to be within the range, uh, within these four squares here, or you are going to get hit right now. Right, there's no good way to prevent this from happening except for being away from the portal key. So around this distance is good. But if you're right beside it, uh, like that Tadaori right now, uh, that's the that would be the end of him. So uh, capture capture the key and I'll do it on my end so that I can give an example of how not to. Okay, expand it and I'll try to fight you there. So what happens here is I'm gonna cast a card and you guys just walk out. Alright. The you have to hold down the movement button for it to prevent that from happening. But that's the only good if you're uh, you are casting a card. If you're doing a HA or a normal attack, you are going to go into the animation. Yeah. You don't want that to happen. If I try to HA cancel my normals, then I fail, or my HA ends like a Darumin who tends to jump in and out of the key. That's it, that's it for me. So, take note not to let that happen, and if you uh, bait your opponents by moving in and out of the portal so that they are forced into the capture animation and you kill them during that period of time. Okay, um, anything else you want to add regarding the portal capture or anything you want to ask? There is one map in particular which is really good for this and that is, um, what's it, Kelpers. Especially if you're on the A and E side, if you're in a 1v1. Yeah, this, a lot of like sprinters actually benefit a lot because of their short charge HS times. So let's say you're void on your portal dancing 1v1 against someone. So you can bait them like back off and did what we just did. And you'll still gain a lot of HS from it. And since that they're trying to get your point and not expanding theirs, it creates an opening. So when you expand it enough, now you can have the chance to go and try to take theirs while well, they're probably like oh crap i forgot to expand mine because i was too busy trying to get yours mm -hmm. okay the a and e side so what you're mm -hmm. saying is uh, you, you don't you you don't expand your point you hmm? you go straight for or, or your opponent goes straight for your point instead of expanding theirs Mm-hmm. It happens sometimes, yes. Yeah, I think, I think Especially I... with a sprinter, like an offensive sprinter like Hirara, they'll just yeah, they try just to take over. you. Then you or can... Voida will just try and run up and try to stun you. But you, want, mm -hmm. you have to use shields for those or else it's gonna be a problem. I think mm -hmm. Kalpas is uh, actually still one of the best spot to demonstrate this too because of how the C point is located in a corner mm. like when you are in mm. that corner and you just move a little bit you make a mistake the result will be the it turns into a portal capture so mm. you you can make use of that to like trick your opponent into making mistakes just be sure that you can survive their cards first and let them start doing normal attacks before that happens mm. okay uh now uh to continue on with portal keys uh we would like to talk about when to distract and when to solo capture. All right, for a map like Star Park in particular, the time you solo capture right, is when all three of your opponents are down here. Like C tends to become a furious fight, and characters are Levi, Yusha, Saber, and a few others that can climb right through to the other side uh, will be able to hop over 
if no one is looking and try to attempt a solo capture. Now, in the event that your team is losing, however, and you, you are fighting something like a Monokuma, a Vio or a Justice that is really difficult to get rid of, this technique will also allow you to pull your opponent's DPS over to you. So what you do as a sprinter or Yusha or Levi is you jump over and try to capture this spot. You bait two to three, uh, okay, usually it's one to two of your opponents over to fight you. If you are able to win the fight on your own, congrats to you. Uh, you just did a 1v2 or you just won in the duel and you will be able to get this point. However, if you are using a character that is just made for pure distraction, Try to build a deck that, uh, and I mean, hopefully you have a deck that is there to keep your opponent with you for as long as possible. In order for your team to end up in a 2v1 situation on the opponent. So, uh, Porter Key captures timing now that you know it's 10 seconds. If you go it up around 30 seconds, right, people have to go to you. And then, uh, when you are at the disadvantage, you can aim for this only if your DPS is not constantly dying. If your DPS is constantly dying and you are an attacker like, uh, like Lemai, please go back and help them instead because if you do overcommit and run over, uh, your team will be the one losing out instead, even in a 2v2 because the opponent is just purely uh, way stronger. Uh, that said, um, Lila, any, anything to add regarding the when to solo cap and when to distract your opponent? No, I feel like you covered it all pretty well. It's mostly just tr just your judgment, basically. You have to get a feel on whether or not to go and like do your stuff and try to distract. Distracting can be a powerful tool because you pull one away. But sometimes you would rather be supporting your teammates there in the fight rather than trying to pull one away. Especially if you, if you have an HS that can hit multiple people, it might be better to just try to help them out than trying to sneak around. Especially if they have a tank who can use door. Because then it's just like, okay, well, I, I, you can waste their door, but... If, especially if it's end game in like the last 30 seconds at C, then it's eh, the situation is like it is it's mostly kind of hard to judge. It is really mainly just experience and your matchup knowledge. Because uh, yeah. once once you know what your quad cards your opponent hold, you will know whether or not you can distract them. And uh, distraction, mm -hmm. distraction is good only if your team is not lacking in DPS. If you are the DPS and you run away yeah. and distract, then your team is definitely going to lose. If you leave the Aqua to fight yeah. her, uh, Justice, she's not going to win. She's nowhere mm -hmm. near going to win. Uh, especially like this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, take note of that mm -hmm. and uh, keep playing and you will learn more. Okay. Um, with that, let's move on to two, uh, one more thing before we, we make the custom room again, which is the free camera. I believe I'm using it right now. Okay, so you change your camera over here. So you switch off. Oh, make sure this hero camera follow is off. Now, the reason why I do this is because this allows me to turn my camera on my own wheel without it locking on to a target. If this camera was switched on, let me give an example here. You see that when I when I move behind, I uh, I can uh, every time I turn it around, it automatically goes back to my target, and it's very hard for me to determine the position of other enemies when I am not able to just freely move around. Now, this thing also affects one other thing which is your hero uh, action slide casting yeah, which I'm gonna do it once here but we'll explain more uh, in, in a bit. So you see that uh, I am actually 
cancelling my movement charge into the HA. So I charge straight into the HA. Uh, Leela can do it too. You, you'll see him move and go straight into the HA animation. Uh, are you able to do it? Yeah, just, yeah, you see? So he just moves and goes into the HA animation. This is called uh, slide HA. Also, uh, it's part of a technique called buffering, which is you buffer this portion, this orange portion, uh, like the start. If, uh, if you don't start, because you actually have a startup. It takes half a second for you to charge, and that half a second is actually very critical. So, uh, you, uh, this technique by is basically buffering the HA startup into your movement so that you reduce that little bit of lag as and where you need it and free camera allows you to charge better because well uh, wow okay well done <laughs> free camera allows you to charge better because you have to be moving straight in order for that to work if you are turning and trying to do it you will not be able to do so I've been trying to tap all this time and it doesn't work but if you are moving straight for half a second and you tap down uh, solid enough or double tap then it's going to activate yeah there we go so take note of this when doing slight HA and with free camera you will have free reign of knowing where your opponents are uh, Nila do, do a HA that goes behind me and then I'll turn the camera for everyone to see yeah go so you see, I can I can still move around and then hit A while following the camera. This is all manual. If not, I will be looking at the same direction, and I will have uh, problems tracking. Especially if uh if hero chase camera is on, it will lock on to the nearest target, and then it might it will screw up on what the information that I'm getting from behind. Alright, that's it for free camera. We're gonna remake this room one more time and this time around we are going to how tracking works in this game. Alright, let's start. Okay, now uh, Lila, what do you know about tracking at this point? I think we've gone hmm. through this multiple times so you you should have full knowledge of how tracking works. Hmm. Well, tracking refers to when you use a card, it will actually, like, when you use a long-range card, it'll lock onto the nearest hero so that, you know, it tracks them and act tries to hit them. But the, the tracking only works as long as you are in their range. So if it's in your range, then it'll pass, it'll still lock on, even if you, like, try to use a portal key to block it. Let's do this in the most effective way ever. I am going to do this! Now oh. with this extended range, I am not going to miss, okay? Now try to dodge this shit! <laughs> okay, okay? So, so as you can see, tracking works as long as your opponent is within your range. And this is how a Mario can use Abakan now. This is the new tech that we just discovered today. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so that I'm gonna use Leon on her and it's just Why are you running away? Use the portal key to dodge! Use the portal key to dodge, man! Okay, okay, okay. Let's restart this entire topic about tracking because I think we we, we definitely lost track there midway. Wait, 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 wait. Let me cap. Let me cap. If you want me, to, if you're doing the counter, no, 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 no. I will just do the HS. HS is too. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so, so the thing about uh, portal dodging, right? If you realize sometimes you manage to dodge people's range card is because you are still within your opponent's range. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do HS, I'm gonna Leon you and you try to use the portal key to dodge, okay? And make sure mm -hmm. you stay within Leon's range or else it's not gonna work. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So you see that he even though he's out of the entire thing, it doesn't really matter because he is still within my range which is absolutely disgusting now that I think about it. This is great. Although it's certainly <laughs> silly. Oh Alright, okay. Uh so the whole the whole idea about tracking, right, you need to make sure uh 
your, you are out of your opponent's range when they are using the range card. So if Aqua does it to me, like, cast a range card on me, I'll use the portal key to dodge it. See, it's totally missed. The reason is because I am out of sight, I am out of direct line of sight, and I am not within Aqua's range. When Aqua tried to do it to me while I had my HS on, because she was still in my range, the tracking of the range cards continued. So always make sure when you're trying to dodge, you need to understand how far your opponent's range is or it will continue to track regardless of how you want to try and dodge it. Uh, that's a side right, this the same applies for every other effect in this game including Amariro's HA. You trigger my HA mm. and then you just try to run behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, run behind me. So you see that this actually auto tracks. No matter where you go, it auto tracks, and I will be able to hit you. So try, try to run behind me, and then hit me from behind. See? And this is how you counter the sprinters that are charging at you as a Mario. The reason for this is because they run within your range. So if you really want a Mario to stop uh, tracking you, right? You have to run behind her without going into her range during the startup. Let's take a look again. Alright. Then she let go, then she hit J again. It's because she allows the tracking to continue. You see, this is actually automated. So always land one hit and let go. If you do more than one hit, I am going to counter you. Alright, you can feel it now? Hmm. So uh, that is how tracking works in this game. It work, uh, HA tracking works the same way. Range cards tracking, even Rengeki works that way. Make sure to be away from your opponent's normal attack range in order to lose track. Alright, that's it for tracking on my end. If it's anything you would like to add on to, now is a good time. Mm, nah, you covered it more, but... <laughs> Yeah, you it, covered it, it, it better. I, I, I think I covered everything I did. I've been studying mm. this since Amaro came out. <laughs> so, uh, this man's been in the lab and then uh, it's yeah, on me. You, you haven't been in the lab, are you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so, 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 so we're done with tracking. You know how to dodge using the portal keys. You know the requirements for it. So, um, be, li be out of line of sight and also be out of your opponent's normal attack range. Next, mm -hmm. let's go straight into the more the one of the most common things that everyone does and you need to know if you want to play this game, which is buffering of the hero action. Now, slight HA. What exactly it is? We just talked about uh, buffering the movement of the HA, uh, bu uh, buffering the hero action into the movement. So this is what we were talking about, as you can see I removed the orange charging circle while still moving at the same time. The same can be done for printer, uh, sprinters. Uh, Lila, you can go ahead and do it. Show show people how you... Uh, how do we call it? Move and then suddenly go into a dash. Yeah. Because do, do, if you do it without doing the buffering, right? You, should, uh, you will stop for half a second before you continue to run. Let's take a look. Yeah, you see? You stop for half a second. You don't want that. You want to, you want to move and go straight into a run where's and when possible. So uh, try to play with two fingers if you can help it. If you are not able to, then uh, you can use still use one hand, two fingers. It still works the same way. Uh, if mm. you're on, if you're on blue stacks on the emulator, I think people has found out how to do something to map buttons so that you can do it. Yeah, well. yeah, you can, you can map it so you can get it easily. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, okay, over, uh, over here now that uh, we are mentioning slight HA, right? Let's go into the next thing that is called buffering your HA into everything. So buffering this thing, right? Actually, does not happens uh, is allowed in everything in this game not just movement it's just slightly harder in movement because you need to move and tap it at the same time in the event of a cut like I cast a cut you can actually just hold down the button and then the thing will be already buffered by the time the animation is over you see there's, there's zero transition 
to the startup charge that you see where I'm not, uh, I get a half a second of not moving at all. Uh, the same goes for Abakan. H S H A everything. You can you can even buffer your H A into H A. Uh, Lila, you give it a try. I'm gonna I'm gonna counter you and then you you use a range card on me. It will work. Okay, and then I'll just hold it down. So so take note that you can buffer everything into everything. And the best part about this is this is this is the. Interesting thing about a mine, alright? You can buffer your normal attacks into HA and use it as a normal cancer. Okay, usually when we do normal cancer, we do 1, 2, 3, 4, and move, right? A Myro can hold the HA button and then use it as the canceling effect. You see that? It's, it, it's actually something that is super good because this allows you to do something called option select for those who doesn't know uh, Lila are you are you clear on what option select Lila? you you do play fighting games right yes okay. yes I am yes. okay so option select in a more generic sense is it allows you to choose between two actions as and when you want it so uh, try, don't move, I'm going to normal attack you and choose between whether I'm going to hold down my HA or normal attack cancel it. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is normal attack cancel. I don't go into the free feed. So, so yeah, keep doing it. There we go, yeah, I just did it. So when Amaro is normal attacking you, she can buffer her HA so that it comes out at any point you try to hit her back. This goes the same, uh, this is the same for every other HA out there, like even Ryunosuke these days. People do this so that uh, they, can, they can push people away right after the normal attacks. So, uh, you want to make use of the tracking on top of TJ buffering to ensure that you 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 have advantage at all times. So if if your opponent is trying to hit you back, you can hold it down. If your opponent is not trying to hit you back, you can actually just normal cancel it. And this is why I say uh HA buffering is such an important part of the game. Uh, it is because it happens even during card cast. So uh, use a range card on me. I believe Aqua can use a range card on me and then immediately buffer it into a dash attack. So you watch, you watch as you just dash straight over and do a downside dash attack. This is this is how Leia kills you. Although he, he will be using his normal attack for most part, but Zack can do it way better. Yeah. Yeah, I try to I try if I try to hit her back right the dash would have already started. And make full use of HA buffering whenever. Make uh turn it into a habit where for certain characters who always needs to HA, just keep buffering your HA. These characters include Justice, where you tear immediately after every normal attack. <laughs> Or <laughs> oh, you, or oh, you tear uh, immediately after a card cast to reduce the amount of chance, of, uh, to reduce uh, as much damage as possible. If the opponent is doing rangeki and all the other nonsense, you can buffer it from a shield. You can buffer it from uh, anything, even <laughs> after a sonra. I uh, uh, just need to hold down the middle part of this right and I'm buffering it. You see, the the circle doesn't appear. I go straight into the animation. <laughs> Uh, how, why you want to do that uh, beats me. Maybe Poro. Poro will want to do that. He can son and then HJ mm. buffer the son effect and then go straight back into gutter in the shortest time possible. Yeah, that's pretty much it from uh, HA and slight HA buffering. Lila, you got any questions regarding this? No, not really. Yeah, you have been doing it uh, most of the time ever since we learned of this tag, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so. Well, a lot of us, like, been doing it just by accident, really. Because there's a lot of situations where, like, let's say you're panicking after using, like, a range card. 
And you're like, wait, 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 get out, get out, get out, get out. And then you're like, oh, okay, I can run immediately after. <laughs> Especially for dash attacks, yeah. yeah. But, but, but for normal HA, uh, it really depends. But uh, for Saber, especially after you do a level 3 charge, uh, you can actually buffer another level 1 charge so that it becomes a full mm. link. Yeah, especially thing. for uh, characters that can loop their HA, like Kai, <laughs> Soul, <laughs> others that won't be. Wait, yeah, Kai and yeah, Soul are so, disgusting so at using this. So, yeah, if he so touches is... you once and gets you in the corner, eh. Yeah, did. Take a god and pray. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have to pick the direction and pray for so mostly. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, so that's it for HA and slight HA buffering. Uh, let's go into dash attacks next. So we will both be using sprinters and we are going to show people how to not only buffer your dash attack, you also can dash attack people from behind so over here uh, we are going in into the dash attack and get C first and let's talk about the dash, dash attack for most people you can start on that you use sprinters way more than I do okay so for dash attack it's basically you you have your range right but when you start sprinting you get a different range. That's the range of your dash attack. So, layers, that normal range is around there, but my dash attack range is, well, stay, stay next to the wall. Oh, like, okay. try to next to me. I'll tell you when you're in. Like, right here. This is my dash attack range. This is, this, this is like, around this here. like one around and a here. Around here. Yeah, it's one and a half square. Mm -hmm. uh, I have more normal attack range than you. Zach is so strong. Nah, man, don't even count. <laughs> Alright, so what a lot of sprinters normally do now, especially Zach, I will give it to Zach because range is abnormally long, <laughs> is that when you sprint past someone, right, instead of doing it there, you would do it off to the side or at an angle, so it's harder to do. Right, so now I'm behind the opponent. Or, by doing this also, right, I just, I can just pass through safely. So if they, if you do this and they try to use a card on you, you can end up just running right past it and then running right back towards it in order to punish them for it. So I'm gonna so do it's it. it's a really useful technique, yeah. I'm gonna do it with Zach so they can see it from my angle. So Zach! Mm -hmm. You see that his range is changes to the point that uh, I can hit people all the way from behind. Doesn't make any sense. He 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 gains the extra range behind him when he does mm -hmm. his dash attack. So if you do it at maximum range, you can actually dodge a mini card. Do you, do you have a mini card right now? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay, try try doing it when I'm trying to dash you from sideways. There we go. <laughs> Oh wow, that thing that thing has really good range. Is that the only one you have? I have Rengeki. Yeah, you go for it. Yeah, I still get hit anyway because Rengeki is three mm -hmm. squares. So but the the point being if when you do this, uh, the whole the whole point is for Zack in particular is when he has his HS. Alright, your opponent won't know when to dodge, especially when you mm -hmm. go or behind. when to try to yeah. try to save himself. You see, see that, there that, you did it correctly. Yeah, the melee I continue to run until the melee cards miss and then I landed the dash attack. So everything was great for me. My opponent wasted a card and I landed a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for dash attacks with Zack, there's one more thing that you want to take note of because of how squishy he is. Right, I usually don't downswipe <laughs> when I'm using when I'm using his dash attack, even though it supposedly nets me another forty percent more damage. So, so you come down it's here. It's big damage, but yeah, Zack's health is point seven. Yeah, so you really. Yeah, it, it's no. just way too scary. So, so uh, let's show this, uh, everyone how we do dash attack cancelling and the difference between cancelling correctly and not doing it correctly. So when you do a correct dash attack cancel, you have to do it at the end of the hit 
immediately so that the card effect happens. Right, what mm. what what happens there is uh however you have to you don't want to be using cards that are like of long cast. Because long cast the the start up time will stay there and that's not good for you. Yeah for cards that have short cast you just immediately do that and you fight up. Or you hold it during the dash let go of the attack, then you let go of the card. And this way, you will turn it into a combo. Player can do it way better than Zack right now because, uh, first of all, you have way better cards than me. And uh, Zack can only do it with melee cards. So, uh, show them a uh, dash attack cancel. Yep. So, this is a full combo that you want to take note of, especially for characters like Kokuriko. If you do it incorrectly and you uh, allow your dash attack to recover this is what happens <laughs> okay so 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 you're gonna get that gap between your the at the end of the dash attack before you are able to do anything else. and you cannot move back or you cannot movement cancel out of it this is why almost everyone in the game dash attack cancels using some form of a card or Dash another dash, so you can buffer your dash attack into a dash. Uh, Lila, you can do it, for, so everyone can take a look. You see, he, he goes straight into another dash instead of doing the full recovery. Uh, I'll do an example here as well. Oh, I don't have to go back to base because of Rachel. Wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, the 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 recovery action for Zack is so long that you can actually feel it. But if you uh, if you buffer your dash attack into the next dash attack, right? Immediately after recovery, right? You can start running instead of uh, holding down the back and forth button. Uh, this is what happens when you do normal normal movement after the dash attack. I'm already holding back over here. You see, it takes it takes a while to do that. So just dash if you need to. Otherwise, use a cut at all times uh, to dash attack cancel. It is actually much better for you. Alright, is it the same for layer? And is there anything else you want to add regarding the dash attacks? Mm, just in general? Mm -hmm. Alright, so... Get your HS and use it. Use it. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is only on a couple of sprinters. Well, I think every sprinter can do it. It's just the distance from the ledge. So... A a lot, not many people know, or even if they do know, it's always a surprise when they happen. Let's say I'm a gunner, right? And I'm currently fighting someone over here, right? If you get close enough with your dash attack, you can actually hit people above the ledge. So, so go, no, go from the opposite side. So go from this side along the ledge, like right. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say I'm, fi I'm fighting someone here. And I'm dead. You, I, I... So that's a little trick that you can do with dash attack. The, the thing about Zack is you can actually do it from the front too. Mm -hmm. now, stay on the ledge. Go, go. Yeah, you, you don't have to move, you don't have to move. Yeah. The the reason for this is because Zack's dash attack has such long range. No, no, go up here and I'll try to do it to you. Yeah, okay, okay. Because I've gotten it with Atari a couple of Yeah, Atari is better if you do it from the start because it's a lot easier at a mm -hmm. certain range. So you take a look at <laughs> Yeah, see? Uh -huh. It's a little trick, but it works. You just have to get it right at the right angle. Yeah, and gunners won't be able to attack you unless they stand up from the edge. So if you come in from the corner, right, they actually have to reposition themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we covered that. That's pretty much it for dash attacks. Now let's go into one of the more irritating things. One of the common things, which is chain cut casting. Okay, uh... uh as mentioned uh, in the first half uh, about cut animation, you can be affected during the startup of a cut. So I'm gonna cut a long cut, and you have to. Do you have anything that can stop me or fit me in there? Uh, no. 
Oh dear. I only have those. <laughs> Okay, uh, you know what? Let's let's reset this thing so that we can talk about chain cut casting and area recovery. Okay. Alright, I will take out, <clears throat> yeah, I'll take out the points. I think I'm slightly faster. Okay, and in the meantime, Leela, you can, you can start talking, describing chain cut casting to everyone. Okay, so for chain card cast, basically it's whenever you want. Let's say you use a card, right? Let's say you use Leon, right? And in the middle of the animation, the opponent shields and starts hitting them. <clears throat> so now you're about half HP and you want to heal. So you swipe your heal card up and it automatically activates right after the Leon goes off. That's chain card casting. It's basically swiping up on two or more different cards at once because you swipe up to use them. It's really useful in a lot of ways. First off, it you since for every single card, the active after the first one, the activation will be so we showed before how long of a cast time Leon has. Well, if we use a card with an instant cast, such as Jaeger the shield, and then use chain card cast into Leon right after, Leon will activate instantly instead of having to go through that long animation. It's really useful for ge for getting off long cast cards like team buffs or team team buffs maybe like uh, Idia or especially Abacon, the long range stun. It's just really good trick in general to learn. All right, so we're gonna go do chain cut casting. And we're gonna talk about the uh, push property mm. and area recovery. Chain cut casting for a start. Now that you guys more or less uh, understood uh, the need for it, which is to reduce the startup for long cast cuts, uh, let's go into an actual example of why you want to do it and why it's important. So Aqua, to, for a quick explanation, uh, she already has good cards on range cards. So when I use a Leon, right, uh, she will be able to activate it as the fastest time possible. However, because of how long the long startup Leon has, right, it can actually still be cancelled. So uh, okay, do it now. Run over to me and fluke. So you see, because of the startup is still there, right? I am still not able to cast it. However, if I'm using a card that has already happened, you can Shiryu me this time. Run over and Shiryu. So you see, uh, I was not knocked down. And I managed to cast the card out because of the zero. Or either, it's not, it's supposed to be no cast startup. But the startup is always there. Even for a no startup card, right? There is this very little frame of time where you can still get knocked up if your opponent. Uh, it will never be done by reaction. It will be like accidental cancelling of the card. So take note of uh, that in particular. You know, there is no such thing as zero startup. But there is such a thing as very fast startup, which is like three frames or less. So that is a lot in this game. Okay, uh, in order for me to cast my Leon properly, right, without being knocked up, I have to cast something that has zero startup and then go into these cards. So, uh, Lila, try to attack me again. So, you see that I don't get knocked up, I manage to knock her down instead, and I can cast all my Leons in succession. This is the benefits of chain card casting. You don't get knocked up because you lose the startup for the second cast onwards. The cons of these or the bad points about this is you are not able to move at all. And if Lila was there using all his cards up before the silence hit, right? He chain card cards as well, right? I will get hit by everything. So let's give this a try. 
see both of us got our cards already up there. However, I'm gonna get hit by everything even though I cast it because I am stuck in the animation all the way until I recover. Now, even if you're in the mid-air and you're trying to recover while casting a card like that then, if it has long startup or rather if it has short startup, people are going to be able to cancel it. So uh, do the Shiryu into HA first, the Shiryu into HA combo if you got that. So I'm knocked down. I tried to cut the card, uh, no, I failed. And that's way worse, I got hit. But that's still okay because I didn't lose this card. However, if uh, he is going to fluke me and then HA me. Do you have enough HP? I don't know, let's just give it a try. Just look me, and then I'm gonna cast Leon, and you will see that I still my Leon gets cancelled anyways. Yeah, now you can kill me. I think I think killing me is fine. All right. <laughs> I, it, it is Aqua. We we do have a shit ton of HP, and uh, we we set it to the point where everybody has a huge HP. So uh, the the whole point of this is to let everyone remember that chain cut deck building around chain cut casting is just as important. You don't want to be using long cast cards on its own. If you are able to choose, and you are especially if you are a melee character, you don't want to be using short cast shields as well. Now, uh, she reel me again, and uh, let's show everyone how you can cancel the sh uh, when I try to recover from the ground. Yeah, my Zen is gone now, and I got knocked up. So, don't tr always try to buffer a uh, no cast into something. Uh, for for people like uh, Saber, if you do a level three and then you do a level one, you will cancel my cards too. Let's give it a try. Okay, you do another one. Oh, oh the angle. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, come over here. Come towards this way. Okay. okay, okay it's, it's okay. You, you you can yeah yeah. Just go for it. Go for it. Let, let, let's show them how how does it can get can nope. Oh, what? <laughs> but you, it has to be in the corner. It has to be. It's okay, okay, okay. Just shiru um, me. Just shiru me. And then I will. No, I, will. I got it, I got it, I got it. Just shiru me. Okay, okay I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do an instant cast. Okay. Oh my god. See, I, I will not be able to get knocked down because I use an instant cast instead of a long cast. So, guys, uh, take note of that. Make use of your chain cut casting. But uh, also take note that there is one particular card that chain cut casting cannot help you out with. Uh, Lila, I want you to use chain cast the fluke into Oh shit. Uh, that's my 15 seconds. Uh, I want you to chain cast the fluke into the push card. Okay, so so the thing about push property is that is, uh, it is the only card that is not affected by knockdown. It's not considered a knockdown or knockdown. Back. It's actually a push. So Lila, do it. Do the fluke into those. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna chain cast everything. So you see that when he when he does that, I still bounce back. I have to. I'm forced to cast everything until the animation ends. Then I will be able to return. That's why push cards on sprinters are actually really good sometimes. Take note of that. And uh, the push property also affects everyone differently. Like a melee cut on a sprinter is going to uh, make the sprinter fly further than when you use a melee cut on a tank. The tank is going to be flying slightly lesser. Uh, Flook me into the air and try to cancel my Zenten when I do area recovery. Oh, you're too far. You're way too far. I think you can just kill me. But let's let's talk about area recovery. So um, when you are knocked up into the air. You can actually do aerial recovery and land on your two feet if you use a card. But this is also where uh, the instant cast and the long cast or the short cast comes into play. Because if you use, uh, if you use a, whoa, okay, if you use a short cast, it can be cancelled. Like, uh, I do it again, do it again so that I can use the Leon on you and you can cancel it. Okay, so uh, while talking about it, area recovery, as you can see there, if you get knocked up into the air, do try to cast a card so that you land on your feet. If you do stay knocked down, right, you're gonna take even more damage. 
Right, uh, although, uh, if you don't use the instant cut, you're going to take even more damage as well. So, knock me up again this time and then show them what happens when you don't recover. Okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're almost there. You're almost there. So cancel you out of it. Yeah, if I don't if I don't recover, I'm gonna take a full combo. I can take a fluke into Kanone, a fluke into other cards simply because I don't recover. So in the event that you are able to always try to recover mid air from mid air, especially if people are uh, trying to do a follow up with a card cast, and hopefully you have a card cast that is instant cast. If not, it might get cancelled. Especially like people by like uh, Saber, Tadaomi and a few others. Now uh, the thing, let's move on to the final few topics. One of them is leveling. Okay, so now that I'm level 1, you see that my stat is 794322 and 31k HP. Yeah, I'm gonna kill Saber. Okay, now you see that uh, I am now 804328 and 32k HP. So, every time you gain a level, you actually gain around 0 0.1, uh, how do we call it, 0 0.01% of your stats. If you actually hit level 9, you pretty much have 10% extra stats compared to your opponent. Now, you may think this is small, but this comes with the multiplier. So, a uh, a character that is hitting hard like Saber, uh, like you're now level 3, take note of your attack, kill me. Mm -hmm. Kill me and then see what happens. How much attack did you get? 10. 10? 10 attack, yes. Yeah, what was your original attack? Oh, 924. 924, and now you are, not, you are 934. Yes. Okay, so uh, use your HS on me. Oh yeah, I think I know why it's because of your deck. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so now what is your attack again? 945. See that you see that exponential increase due to the level that you have gained. You just gain two levels and you gain around twenty attack. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gain around twenty attack. Which is uh, not wrong as to say 0.01%. If you gain 9 levels and your opponent is still at level 1, you actually have 10% more stats than your opponent if everybody starts at the same deck level. So mm -hmm. try not to fit in a battle because every bit of stats count, especially HP. Like a Gustav gaining an extra 10% at level 9 is basically someone who just gained an extra 1500 HP and that's a full extra hit and it's a, a little more damage that might end up in your death so uh, tr each level gains your opponent all your opponents get that boosted stats so when you are playing a game and try your best not to fit whenever you can help it if you die, die have to, if there's no way that you really have to die, then make sure you contribute and do something and turn it into a trait, rather than just dying for with little to no contributions. Unless of course you, you get stuck in the stun lock, those are totally different and then you don't have a choice. Yeah, this is why teamwork is important, You're, you need your team to save you and you need to save your team <laughs> during a battle. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty much it for leveling. I uh, don't know if, uh, if you have anything to add, Lila? <laughs> Just don't run in recklessly. <laughs> Try to push as a team. Yeah, if you're seeing a you 2v1, right, don't run in either. Especially as a sprinter. I know you're supposed to contest C, but if your team is not coming to help you, then don't bother trying mm -hmm. to get in. It just does not just, benefit. Uh, just, just be nice. Just be patient with people, you know. If, if the first push fails, don't stand at spawn or stand at A and do nothing for the entire match. You have two whole minutes left to make something happen. <laughs> It's, it's never over yeah, until it's that, over. That, you know? that, that's something else. That's basically being toxic. Yeah, don't be toxic in this game and just go all the way to the Be nice to end. your team and your team will hopefully be nice to you.
That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is going to be the final, uh, second last topic, which is how to deal with ponies. We will probably have to head out to so that people have a better example. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, during this time, uh, let's go into our next topic, which is how to deal with ponies. So, Lila, you can go ahead and start. Alright, so when we say Oni, we're talking about people who have extremely high deck level. So, basically, a lot of people around S, the upper levels of S5, S6, and up. So No, actually, uh, Oni is someone who has 10 levels more than you. 10 levels? Oh, specific? Yeah, oh, okay. he just needs to be 10 levels higher than you and he's an Oni. But, oh, okay. uh, but basically, uh, the concept is still the same. That guy probably has way more stats than you. Mm -hmm. Just people who have generally higher starting stats than you. Like way, way higher. So how so, do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot of options on how you can do it. One is just try to... Well, a lot of them are dependent on your deck. If you want, if you have to fight an Oni, which I don't recommend you do, just try to incapacitate them and try to gang on like 2v1, 3v1 them. Or try to get rid of other surrounding players so that that three that you have the numbers advantage. Another good way is to use status effect cards like stun, silence, HS steal, anything to really like set them or put them off. But just try you have to play smart you have to know when to engage when you're safe when like to use your cards especially pay attention to chain card casting because you're mobile and some only may be experienced players and will predict the next card you're going to do and one shot you and punish you with certain cards so yeah just generally just try to be careful around them okay we are gonna go Get do them. a quick example of how we deal with onis uh you can you bring something that can boost your defense to as high as possible just bring as much defense up as possible okay mm -hmm. then we're going to go into the game like we will try to end this in the next five minutes so bear with us we are almost oh. done Okay, 7996. Defense up. Yeah, bring the guy with the highest defense and defense up. Thing I recommend Maria. No. Okay, so just defense up. Hmm. I need to find them. You should have at least two. So just bring both. Yes, it's, it's good enough. Uh, the reason for this, unfortunately, is because I'm in the last five percent of battery. <laughs> oh my uh, god! Yes, you are I'm, charging. I can't. I'm. I'm streaming too. Oh my. Okay. Right, okay. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Because so I guess because uh, seven nine nine six. Alright, we, we already talked about the type of cards to use against an Oni back when you are doing deck building. Because we are talking about how you want to rank and how you want to do how do you want to use stuns and all that in the rank mindset. So I'm gonna just show everyone a quick example of how important Gimetaru, Mama, Shield Breakers and Stuns are when fighting an Oni. Mm. So uh, I am pretty sure I am the Oni to Leela. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. because I have a high. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So, uh, just a quick uh, recap on when, what, when you bring this kind of cards to find out what you can do and how you want to do it. Now, uh, for a start, attack up only boosts yourself. So, only Himetaru boosts yourself. And Taiwa is the one you want to bring at all times because it boosts your entire team. 
So during a team fight, if you do use Taiwa, your entire team gets higher stats increase than Himitaru. So use a defense up and I'll try to attack you. Okay, so against an Oni, most very very often you will be dealing one damage. So uh, what you want is to just keep using defense up when it runs out, okay? So I'm going to use attack up. And then you'll see that I am still doing one damage. The reason for this is because the attack up boost right doesn't boost it to the point where the defense up does. The defense up UR actually boosts them their defense by 10%. I mean, uh, sorry, 1000%. So it boosts the defense by 10 points. The only way to go against the defense up, like, uh, come back here again, is by using Mama. And then down so I do. And you'll see that the amount of damage that I'm doing doesn't make sense. Right? So against an Oni, you want to land your mama on as many people as possible. Especially during a team fight. So right before a team fight, if you can land mama on two characters or two of your opponents, they will be forced to shield during that fight. If not, they are going to die. And in the event that they shield and your team has a Kanone or something or some form of a guard break, they are still going to die. And then the next card that we'll be talking about is actually Shield Breaker because this one reduces your opponent's defense by half and it benefits the entire team as well. You can see that the amount of damage that I'm doing on top of the downside is actually way higher than either. Of course, if he uses a defense up, it's not going to work. And these four cards are basically the cards that you really want to bring into rank when you fight an Oni. If you don't have this, you are going to be bringing stuns. You are going to be bringing things that, uh, like what Dila said, incapacitate your opponents rather than fight them on. You let the, your team do the damage. If you are the character that has to do the damage and you are not able to do the damage, you are most likely going to lose. So this is the only things that we are going to talk about and Lila, the fun fact now is that uh, we just ran out of bed and uh, and it's now no signal so we are going to record without a screen for a bit <laughs> and, and yeah I mean we are almost done so the last topic of the day is actually just call outs and quick chat now for call outs and quick chat right uh if you don't understand Japanese, then uh, it will definitely be difficult. So I don't, you don't have to force yourself to do it. But for call outs and quick chat, if you are able to play with a group of friends and have headphones or have voice chat on, please do use it because this is a team game. Uh, Lila, you want to uh, explain more about this and end, the, end this whole bootcamp for everyone? <laughs> oh my, just a couple more things. Notice that when he hit me, Mama, I try to use my second defense up card, but it still did, it didn't work because my defense is currently set to zero. And a thousand percent of zero is still zero. Mm -hmm. But with Shield Breaker, it worked because it's still 50% of my defense. So I still get the boost. So he still did one damage. So just be aware of that. I don't think anyone's going to run two defense up, but there's some people who might be hit with Mama and then try, try to defense up, maybe on accident, maybe on purpose. But just know that it can happen. And it's something to keep in mind if you're running Mama. But for callout, yeah, just try to play as a team, especially if you're playing in tournaments. If you're playing rank, especially if you're climbing to S to higher S, like S six, S seven, S eight, S nine. Top ten K on was best yeah. is to have a voice chat. If you want to hit top five mm -hmm. K, right, with a decent deck level, it's entirely possible, just with mm -hmm. good communication. Mm -hmm. And for call out, uh, I don't understand Japanese, but you can easily just you like download Google Translate or something. Or you can check the wiki because they have a few phrases on there as well. But for the in-game chat, just like saying like hello or sorry, wrong deck, because that's one of the options, or sorry or good job, it can really go far, you know. It just makes it helps communicate with your team, it helps boost up their morale, lets them know that, oh, I brought the wrong deck. This is gonna get weird. Yeah, and when instead of thinking like this man really brought 
Rengeki Leon Saber? Yeah. What? And, and, and when yeah. somebody does bad, keep asking him, uh, is your deck really okay? That's the one. And mm-hmm. that, you can, I mean, there's toxic stuff in there. There's, uh, there's toxic, toxic stuff, stuff but uh, everything is Mikata the... nice. Let's be honest, Mikata <laughs> nice is the best. Mm-hmm. One. But correct use of it and not spamming it when like your teammates die or something, or when you get a kill, when you get a team wipe, it goes a long way. You know, everyone likes to be praised. Yeah, just and just when you praise, you do better. When you just tell everyone, you everyone will do their best until the end of the battle. Because there's mm-hmm. actually one oh. line like that. It actually means, uh, let's do our best until the end. Yeah, go, mm-hmm. go to the wiki and check it out. So, uh, okay, I think we pretty well, much, we pretty much call covered out, everything. Wait, for call-out, okay. there's, there's one more set of call-outs that are important. Is the the ones with that refer to specific portal point or capture point. So if you're like uh if you if you're grinding off season rank right, where you can have more than one type of class, so like two sprinters and a gunner or like three sprinter, just communicating it so like just saying like oh I'm gonna go get C, so you guys can sit back and charge, it just helps a lot you know because that way your teammates are charging more and you can do what you want to do. Yep. Okay, mm-hmm. I think that concludes everything we have for our boot camp. And uh, for anyone who pick who is picking up Compass now, especially to this week, that the Miku collab is back. I mean, what back? What do you mean back? This is the the new Miku collab for the new skin. Uh, good luck. And uh, if you have any questions, do join the people in the Discord group. Uh, I will put up the Discord links below and the Facebook group link below in the comment section. Do subscribe because we will be continuing this for character specific because uh, yeah, we will we, we do character specific chats uh, over the year, maybe once a week or something. So mm-hmm. and we will also uh, run tournaments and put it up in this channel. So that's it on our end. I'll see you guys. Uh, everyone, thank you, Leela, today, and I'll see you in mm-hmm. a bit. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye.